All right, Professor Hardcore here. Today we are going to be go going over Twitch 101, how to get started streaming and how to improve your streams. First up on our agenda, we are going to start with planning your brand when planning your brand you are essentially trying to figure out what is going to make you unique as a streamer in case you don't know twitch kind of has a problem where there are there are too many people streaming and not enough people watching so most people that you're going to see on your channel are likely to be other streamers so with so many streamers out there you really have to consider okay what makes me unique what can i do to come off as unique that is the first step towards success as a streamer. So, in order to figure this out for yourself, I have come up with three simple questions. The first of which, what do you intend to stream most of the time? If you're going to be streaming video games, ask yourself what kind of video games. For example, are you going to be streaming wholesome or calm video games like Animal Crossing? Multiplayer competitive games like Overwatch or CSGO? Speedrunning games, maybe. You're going maybe you're going to be speedrunning Super Metroid or Mario Odyssey or some other obscure game that uh some some obscure game that not many people have heard of. Maybe you speedrun Jack and Daxter. Who knows? Uh, you can speed because you can basically speedrun anything. Uh, do you play retro or indie games like Contra? Do you play rage inducing games like Getting Over It with Bennett Foddy or uh, Jump King, which is a new one I've heard about? Love the fit, looking snazzy, thank you very much. And uh, do you and finally, do you intend to play a certain series or studio, such as Are You a Nintendo Stan? If you're a Nintendo stand, you should be enjoying the soundtrack. <laughs> so that, so that's what, those are the types of things that you should be asking yourself if you're playing video games. If you're, uh, if you're not intending on playing video games, then are you going to be doing music? Are you going to be doing art streams? Are you going to be doing just chatting? And remember, just chatting is a huge category that covers a lot of ground. So you, if you're doing just chatting, you need, need to think, what speciality within that am I doing? Such as, are you giving out therapy or life advice? Are you reviewing different forms of media? Are you doing something more of a podcast style? Or are you just, you know, interact, planning on interacting with your chat? You know, these are the sorts of questions that you need to ask yourself because these, the, what you do on stream is going to heavily influence your brand. It's going to heavily influence what the image that you get across to your viewers. So, yeah, that would be the, that would be the first question. So try to answer that for yourself. Second question, what do you feel passionate about? Perhaps you feel passionate about a certain genre of music, such as me. Are you in? So, but as another example, are you into video game remixes? If you are, feature your favorites on your channel. Are you into a particular game or series? Did you grow up with Nintendo? Let that influence the games you play. Are you into a specific person or group? Who would you consider your idols? You, you can express your admiration for these people on your channel. Perhaps you'll find like-minded people who are also fans and you can connect with. Are you a fan of a place? Maybe perhaps the place you're from. Make references, incorporate the flag, show your pride for the place that you're from. Uh, finally, a thing, something, maybe something you collect. Display, if you have something that you collect, display your collect collection in the background here. I'm actually going to be getting a board for the wall here soon uh, to display some of my CDs because my, my channel is centered around metal music, so I'm going to display some metal CDs. So yeah, any so any sort of thing that you can that you feel passionate about can really influence what the identity of your channel and add to the multiple layers that you should be setting up of personality. Remember, you're not your channel is not just a gimmick, it's you. You are trying to get across the major aspects of you. Uh, which brings us to our last point. What can you, what do you know, or what can you do very well? Are you, may, perhaps you're a talented speedrunner. Can you do challenge runs? Can you mod? Do you have non-gaming talents such as art, singing, playing an instrument? Can you do a backflip? If you can, my, my hat off to you. That's actually really freaking impressive. 
Uh, finally, whatever you can bring to the table, bring it. It adds a personal flair to your brand as well as variety. You know, you don't just have you don't just have to narrow yourself into one category. Adding variety can add additional flavor to your channel. That's like when I started doing art streams. You know, I br I was branching out from just doing video games because you know I like art. I'm somewhat good at it, and. Yeah, that it, it, it turned out to be a big hit. Now I do art streams. Good evening, Ronald. How is it going? Welcome to the pit. We are just going over how to plan your brand right now. We've gone over the three major questions you need to ask yourself when planning out your brand. One, what do you intend to stream most of the time? Two, what do you feel passionate about? And three, what do you know or can do very well? If you can answer these questions, then you can use these answers to add variety and depth to your channel and really influence it with your personality. Because at the end of the day, your stream should reflect you. You're not just another gaming streamer out there. You are an individual and you have individual things that make up you, your identity. Put that into your streams. Yes, branding is super fun. Uh, so, what, you know, when I was planning my brand, I was thinking, okay, what's an integral part to me? Metal. I love metal music. So I incorporated that into my streams, even though my channel, like the stuff I do on it has literally nothing to do with metal music, aside from the, maybe the music streams, we, uh, it still adds a layer of identity to my channel and y'all are fine with it. Not, I, I'm pretty sure that most of you, if not all of you are not metal heads and yet you watch anyways. It does so you don't need to narrow yourself in your your identity doesn't determine what kind of audience you bring in but it can help you connect so really it's more of it's more of a benefit than a detriment so once you have your brand in mind you need to apply it things you can apply it to at the start include your twitch about panels your banner your profile picture your overlays that go that uh, go over your stream and most importantly your mascot now here's the thing Every channel has a mascot, whether they like to admit it or not. The ma the mascot is essentially just the image of the channel. What do what image pops up in someone's head when they think of your channel? That is your mascot. Usually, it's either a picture of the person. I've seen people w who have just taken a nice portrait photo of themselves and slapped that in the profile picture. That's fine. Uh, they've drawn pictures of themselves, like chibi heads, they, or they've created their own characters. They've used animals. People have just people have used many different things to represent their channel let the answers to these questions help you figure out what you want to be the identity of your channel you can also use fictional characters if you want say for example you want to use I don't know Luigi let's say you want Luigi to be the face of your channel that's fine that's perfectly fine uh, I wouldn't really go for uh, real people because that like real people that aren't you because one that's de kind of defeating the purpose of the channel being personalized to you and two you might get in trouble with that person for using their image so I wouldn't take a famous person and make that your mascot not not a good idea. Uh, and aside from all those things I listed, perhaps you can come up with other unique ideas to, to, your, to your brand that you can add to your channel, such as the featured songs things that I, the featured songs that I do over there on the bottom left side of the screen there and in my about panels. That, that's, I, that's pretty unique to me. Not everyone has that, but it fits along with my brand. I'm saving up for Stage Crew Plus. Awesome. Awesome. Looking forward to it. All right. So, once you once you've got your brand figured out, you're going to want to you want, you're going to want to get some resources for this because you're going to have to create that stuff. Your profile picture, your about panels, your banner, all of that. Stop being sus and never glossy. Never. Also, welcome to the pit, my man. Glad to have you here. In my case, I'm going with a bit of a casino flair, and my character Ronald is going to be the face of it, like a grandmaster of sorts. I like it. I like it. So you've got, you've already got a mascot figured out, and a bit, of, and a theme going on. That's perfect. You know what, Ronald? We're gonna go with that. We're gonna go with that right now, because I am going to show you how to get free, completely free resources for creating your own unique panels and your own unique identity, like visually speaking. 
So, first off, all the... The magic tool that I am going to use to get free images is, well, Google Images. But let's see if I can find something here. Let's see, this one, said, this one says licensable, so let's go ahead and check that out. Ooh, this is one that you have to log in for. I wouldn't recommend going to any websites where you have to log in for it. Uh, you de there are definitely resources out there for those of you who do not want to just keep tossing out your email everywhere. Here's one. Oh, this one's in 4K, that's nice. So that's the image, but we have to check, when doing this, we always have to check the copyrights, because there are copyrights on these images. Please contact us if you want to, okay. So they're not, so this isn't a good place to find one. Oh, see, see here, look at this. This is what's important. I click, on, I go to the website, and I check for the image license, and in this case it says personal use only. You cannot use it for your channel if it says personal use, it has to say commercial use. And yes, before you ask, the background that I'm using was per was set for uh, commercial use. Ooh, I like this one. What about this one? This one's pretty cool. Let's see. Let's see if I could find the license on this. So I'm not see I'm not seeing anything here. So normally I wouldn't normally I wouldn't do this, but I do want to get through the curriculum. So I'm going to assume here that this is commercial access, that because they haven't specified a copyright otherwise. I wouldn't recommend doing this. We're just doing this for example. Any wallpaper that says that it has commercial it, that has a commercial license, you may have to pay a little money for it. Uh, you can find- you can definitely find some for free. The one I found for my background, that was free. So you can definitely find free stuff. For now, I'm just going to assume that this one is free. Don't actually do this. So I'm going to save that. All good, thanks for the demonstration, no problem. Can I use a screenshot from a game? Yes, you can, actually. In most cases, taking content from video games is actually a really good idea. However, keep in mind that video games often have licensed content in them, such as, li in most cases, this would be licensed songs. In fact, I actually had a Jet Set Radio Future stream where the VOD was muted in places because one of the tracks, Isle 10, was copyrighted so you know pay attention make sure that all the music is original in the game before you go taking that music as for screenshots you should be fine honestly so yeah you could take a screenshot from a game that works all right so now that i've got my background i'm gonna do a little photo editing to make it my own to do that i'm going to use this program called paint.net this program is completely free it blows microsoft paint out of the water it's it's like microsoft paint but better yo what is up mystic welcome to the pit we are creating a custom background for ronald's here all right, so I'm going to bring it in here. Ooh, that, it's a it's a little JPEGy, but it shouldn't be too bad, especially since most of what we're going to do is apply. Uh, see, I like the green. I like the green, but I'm thinking we can get a cool gradient effect going on if here. So let's see, let's see if we can accomplish that. So I what I'm going to do is I'm going to hit this. I'm going to copy this. I'm going to hit this with a plugin for paint.net called Kill Color Keeper. And basically all it does is it deletes the color that you want. You can adjust how sensitive it is to that color. So I think that's sensitive enough. So now, as you can see, all the background here is transparent, but I've pulled out the front. Paint.net is a combo between micro Microsoft Paint and Photoshop, pretty much. Now I'm going to take a layer, I'm going to put it underneath, and I am going to create a bit of a gradient. So I can do something like, ooh, I can do a spiral. 
let's do it this way. Let's put it over here. Ooh, I like the way that looks. That's pretty cool. But the green and the red kind of makes it look, you know, a little bit uh, Christmassy. So let's change the green. So I can change the green to whatever color I want using the adjustments layer. So maybe I add, maybe I go to hue and saturation. I'm gonna change the hue. Let's make that like, uh, I'm thinking a yellow, like a gold. Yeah, yeah. Maybe add a little bit more saturation, a little bit more brightness. And there we go. Look at that. That's cool. Now, normally, you wouldn't have this. Actually, I can edit that out if I want to. But maybe that's the condition for using that for using these images. Why is the biggest flex now 100,000 decibels? Because the price of everything raised up, Glossy. The market, the market has increased. Yellow and purple look awesome. We can do yellow and purple. Let's give that a shot. Okay, so I'm just going to hide that previous layer. And now I'm going to switch it up. I'm going to try yellow and purple like Luyuki suggested. Ooh, that does look kind of awesome. All right, Lu all right, Ronald, this is for you, in theory. So what do you like more? Do you like the red and the, the red and the black or the purple and the black? What do you think? What's achievement unlocked? Why don't you redeem it and find out? It's not very expensive. Which one, which one do you want to go with, Ronald? You want to go with uh, you want to go with purple and black or red and black? I can go I can go either way. Purple and yellow, purple and yellow, perfect. All right, here we go. All right, now I can just now I just need to. Go to edit, or I think it's under layers. Yeah, I just need to merge all the layers down. And get rid of that other layer. Then I can just save it. And you always want to save as PNG if possible. Uh, JPEG introduces uh, compression, which ruins the image quality. So PNG all the way. I uh, know it's purple and green are chaotic for some reason. Yeah, uh, purple and green actually have a history of being two of the easiest colors to use on television, I think, or ink press, which is why in comic a lot of comics characters are green and purple, like the Hulk and Green Goblin. I painted my headset yellow and purple. Perfect. Nice, Ronald understands the importance of PNGs. You'll be right back, sounds good. All right, so now that we've got that, uh, let's say let's say that we want to get some sounds for our stream, right? Let's say we want to get some sound effects, you know, like uh, for our alerts. We want people to cheer. I'm going to this one. I actually do have a website for this is freesound.org. You will need to get an account in order to download the sound. But here, all, basically all of the sounds on this website are free. However, some are attribution only. Uh, license, which means that in order to use them, you have to attribute the original poster. I would avoid this by finding full copyright al allow, uh, full copyright allowed. So, commercial use, no attribution. That's what you're looking for here. So, let's say we want cheers. So, I'm going to search this up on freesound.org, and I am going to say uh, Creative Commons Zero, which is the non-attribution. You can use this for whatever. That's a pretty good one. That's a pretty good one. What about this one? Nah. What about this one? Woo! That's pretty good. Yeah, it looks like it does it three times. Okay. Yeah, I like that one. All right, so I'm gonna log in real quick. There we go, all right. So I'm gonna go back to Cheers. Going to go to Creative Commons. This is so cool. Glad you think so, Luiki. 
Try to find Chaos. Chaos is probably on there. I don't know, man. Might not be. Uh, let's see. Okay, crowdshear.wave. I like this one. I'm going to download it. Download. Perfect. And remember, I'm checking that it's under the Creative Commons Zero license, which means we can use that. So now that I've got my sound, let's say I want to edit it. The, you, you see the uh, sound has three cheers in it, right? So let's say I only want one cheer for like an alert. So I can edit that with a free audio editing program called Audacity. So I'm going to import that. I'm going to go to File, Import Audio. I'm going to go to my downloads and I'm going to grab the sound. All right, so let's say we only want the first cheer here. We don't want the second two. All I need to do is highlight the second two cheers and hit the delete key on my keyboard. Delete. And there we go. And if we want to, we can just play this back. Just skip back to the beginning. All right, so now we're going to just export the sound, export it as an MP3 or a wave. MP3 is a little bit more um, versatile in terms of where you can put it. So you don't even need to cut it. Nope. I'm just going to export this. All right, so we have our sound now. We've got our background, we've got our sound, and we can use that background to create Twitch panels if we want. You can just cut out a portion of the picture and then that and then use that as your as your panel. That's exactly what I did. I also used it for my banner. So really, just having a background makes it perf uh, makes it perfect for creating all of the other things. What if you wanted to use sounds from a video? Like if I wanted to get a custom sound not on the website, could I use a video? Yes, you could. So let, in fact, I was just going to get into something like that. So here, let's say we want some video resources. Let's say I want like a fire effect or something. So I can search up fire effects. And you get here, back, fire background animation video effects. That looks pretty cool to me. So let's say I want to download that. Let's f first, let's check the, again, let's check the, uh, let, let's check the, uh, requirements, the copyright. Get access to 100. Okay, so it looks like you need to become a patron for this guy in order to in order to use it. But we're just going to again, we're just going to assume that uh, the copyright is the copyright is open. Ooh, here's a here's a fire hell spark, something like that. This video is perfect for a screensaver on your desktop. Okay, this it looks like this one we can use. So I am going to take this YouTube link and I'm going to search up YouTube to MP4. And then we can take that, we can pop it into any one of these converters. It really doesn't matter. Pop in the link, hit go. Select our output resolution, so MP4 720p works fine. And we've got and we've got our effect. Now let's say you wanted to do the audio. I'm definitely, definitely saving up 50,000 decibels. Sounds good. Yeah, I, I figured you guys needed something more, to, something to save up for once you get stage crew. So I did that. Stage crew still costs the same amount though. I, I don't want people getting gypped on that. And I think I still think 5,000 is a good amount of decibels. All right, uh, let's say you want like a door sound. Ooh, this one has a lot of good effects on it. So this one uses the CCO app attribution license. That means we have to attribute the channel if we want to use it. Which you can do, you can uh, create a Twitch panel for at for attributing all of the sources that uh, you use for your channel. Say like, background original background courtesy of blank. Uh, door sound effect courtesy of blank. 
So then we're just going to take this. We're going to open up YouTube to MP3. Punch it in, convert, and we've got our door sound effects. Now let's say it's on a video that you already have. You can just, again, you can just Google audio vi video separator. Separate audio from video online. Perfect. There's a lot there's a lot of resources online for this stuff. So yeah, that's how you can grab the audio from a video. And how you can get video effects from YouTube. You always have to be looking for that copyright though. You always have to be looking for that, because it it will get you into trouble down the line. They might not discover you when you're small, but if you ever get big, you will get in legal trouble. And that could hit you pretty dang hard. So, uh, I guess last note for planning your brand. So this is that's gonna be it for planning your brand. Um, I guess the last thing I'll go over is for video editing. A free video editing tool is called DaVinci Resolve. It's by Blackmagic Design, and it is completely free. There are some more advanced features that are locked behind a paywall. Uh, but for simple editing, simple effects, you know, everything you would need to get started as a uh, video editor, it's all there. DaVinci Resolve all the way would highly recommend. And if you want to get into like animating and really advanced video editing, like 3D sculpting and all that stuff, Blender. Blender is a free tool for that. All right, so that's it for planning your brand. Next up, we have equipment. Oh, and uh, let's see here. What visuals do I have for equipment? Uh, yes, the photo of my setup. So this right here is my setup. This is what I have for streaming and for doing all my editing and just generally what I like. This is just generally my computer. My computer is over on the left left here. This is actually a custom build that I made. It's got a uh, it's got an RTX 2080. Uh, it's got a Ryzen RX uh, a Ryzen 270X on a, a uh, gigabyte Aorus motherboard with uh, 32 gigs of RAM and a one terabyte solid state drive. We have the same Joy-Cons, nice. Yes, fellow AMD user. Red team rise up. Although I do, I, I do think that uh, Nvidia still has the better graphics cards, but that's changing. They're working really hard on, AMD is working really hard on its um, Raytheon. Okay. So you'll see in this picture here, a couple things. My computer on the left side, I've got three monitors. Uh, I've got my microphone here, which is a Shure SM7B, which is connected to my Scar Focusrite Scarlett 2i2 audio interface up here. So I'm using the, you know, the nice setup for microphones. I've got a pair of cro uh, V-Moda Crossfade M100 headphones right here. Uh, and that's all the nice equipment. Oh yeah, and a um, a Sony Alpha 5100 DSLR up here. Now that's all the expensive equipment. That's all like the super nice stuff that I got for other purposes that I just repurposed for streaming. Those, that's all of the nice equipment, but you'll see I also have some budget options here. On the left here and on the right, I actually have desk lamps for my lighting. So, you know, if you're looking for if you're looking for lighting, you can go on Amazon and buy like a ring light for less than $50. However, you can also just find a desk lamp lying around and set that up. I've just got two, one for uh, cool lighting and one for warm lighting. So you'll see like this part of my face is warm, this part of my face is cool. And you'll notice there's also some tape on this. That's because I have taped tissue paper, white tissue paper, over top of the lamp to create a soft lighting. So you'll see here, if I put my hand up uh, around here, anywhere here forward, the shadow on my face is very dispersed. Well, it's only when I get really close that it becomes a hard shadow. Same goes for this one. If I put my hand up, it's a very soft shadow. You don't want hard shadows. So that uh, and you do have natural shadows on your face, not just if you put your hands up. So you can get tissue paper and tape from the dollar store. 
So you can absolutely, so you can absolutely do with just desk lamps for lighting, but you do want to have lighting from the front. That it, you do need that. Let's just go through the list one by one. Okay, microphone. Uh, budget option. You want to get a cardioid directional, which means directional microphone. That means it records audio directly in front of it. This is really good for streaming because it doesn't capture noise from anywhere else around the room. Just what's in front of it. So it's more likely to capture your voice. So cardioid microphone. Uh, you don't need to get the XLR the uh, microphone like what I have here. You don't need to get an audio interface. Just any USB microphone is fine. I highly recommend the HyperX SoloCast, which is currently $54 on Amazon. It, it It's topping all the review charts for uh, streaming microphones on a budget. Really good microphone. Really good microphone and you want a good microphone. Uh, headphones. Any shitty pair of headphones works perfectly fine because that's the, the headphones are something that you and only you are going to be hearing. That's not on the audience side. That's only on your side. So any pair of earfo uh, earphones or earbuds that you can wear for a long time that won't bleed too much sound into the microphone and that won't annoy you with how bad they sound, it's perfectly fine. Like a $15 pair of earbuds works just fine. I've seen major streamers use earbuds for their for their monitoring, but you should have headphones. You don't want mo you don't want audio playing out in the open. Otherwise, it's going to get picked up on the mic, and then it's going to double with your recorded game audio. So you definitely want to have your audio coming through headphones. Yes, it de yes you get more diffuse you get more diffusal on the light if you put the tissue paper up in front. I use the blue snowball, really good mic. You can get them for 50, 70 bucks. There, there you go, you could do that too. Okay, here, okay, Mystic, I'm glad that you mentioned this. Gaming headsets. No, don't. Do not get a gaming headset for streaming. As someone who used this, a relatively good gaming headset, I paid like a hundred bucks for this. As someone who used a good gaming headset for streaming, it was fucking awful. It Every time I moved my head, the microphone would rub inside of the casing and make a sound. The arm would bounce up and down and make a sound. It would, ca it would catch me breathing more often than it would catch me uh, making the, you know, making noise with my mouth. It's, uh, it, and the audio quality was just absolutely awful. It was tinny. Look, I don't deny that gaming headsets are great for gaming. That's true. Because in gaming, the uh, the priorities are reversed. When you're gaming, you want good headphones, but a bad mic. Because you're just speaking to people through like Xbox Live, which already has shitty quality. Or like Discord. So you don't care about your mic. But streaming, you really want to care about your mic. So you, so I would highly recommend putting more money into a, getting a separate good mic and, and using very little money to get a pair of headphones. So again, do not get a gaming headset for streaming. Get a separate microphone. Do yourself and everyone else a favor. Have we gotten to webcams yet? Uh, no, we have not, but I am going to cover that in just a moment. I don't deny that they're good headsets, but I good headphones though. I stick with uh, Blue Snowball and the Turtle Beaches for audio. That perfectly, that works perfectly. I just use my phone to stream. We'll get into that. We'll get into that. So yeah, headphones. Uh, actually, you know what? I can skip ahead. Webcam. Any well-reviewed web USB webcam on Amazon should be fine. You can get them for like twenty dollars or less. Uh, however, what like what Glossy said, you can use your phone. To sh as a webcam. Yeah, that's actually possible. I'll show you how to do it in OBS uh, in the next section of the lesson. But for now, just know that you can use your, your phone as a webcam, which means you only need something to hold your phone up in front of your face. Just a, just a, little, my just a little phone stand. Good gaming options are the HyperXs. They're not good. They're not gaming headsets, just rebranded. 
Still, I, again, I, I don't recommend headsets. You do what you want. These are my these are my tips for you. You can do what you want, but I would not use a headset. I would not use a headset again. Because remember, I streamed with a headset for three months. Not good. Terrible. All right, so that's the webcam. Uh, let's see here. And if you get a USB uh, webcam, you don't. Uh, you can just plug that directly into your computer. But uh, using your phone as a webcam is actually a really surprisingly good option. So we'll get into that. Uh, capture card. This only matters if you intend to stream console games on your computer as opposed to only computer games or streaming directly from the console. Because with the PS4 and the Xbox One and up, you can stream directly from the console to Twitch. And that's becoming a more popular thing. However, if you're streaming computer games or if you want to stream your Switch, uh, then you're going to need a cap or sorry if you're going to if you want to like stream your switch or like an older console You're going to need a capture card So you know so for my recommendation for that I would recommend mine Which is the Avermedia media live gamer mini which is about a hundred dollars on Amazon and it is the cheapest Capture card I could find from a major reputable brand like Elgato uh, and it has been working pretty dang good for me over the past several months. I mean, y'all have seen my gameplay. It doesn't look bad. Like, I get the- I get consistent game audio. Uh, there's an HDMI pass-through, so you plug the HDMI from the source into the capture card, and then there's an HDMI out port that runs directly to my TV up here on the wall where I just play the game. So I get zero lag play- so I get zero lag play while it's still streaming via USB to my computer. It also has H.264 in built-in encoding, which is taking a lot of stress off of my computer. Because if you, if you don't have built-in encoding, the computer has to encode the, the game audio and game video that comes from the capture card. But if it's built onto the capture card, then your computer is doing less work. And yes, you can stream directly from the console to Twitch on a PS4 or newer and an Xbox One or newer, I believe. Uh, I'm not covering that here, but you could definitely do that. So that, so that's what I recommend for Capture Card. Uh, if you're going to go for one cheaper, like those $40 ones that are just like no-name brands, uh, at least get one with HDMI pass-through, so you get that zero lag play, and one with uh, 1080p 60fps, because that's what you want to be streaming in. Don't stream in 2K, don't stream in 4K, stream in 1080p 60fps. Most people aren't going to take advantage of 2K or 4K. Most Remember, most people on Twitch do not full screen the video, right? So even if you are streaming in 4K and someone has it just so happens to have a 4K monitor, they're not going to full screen the Twitch stream. They're going to have it open and they're going to have chat like or they're going to have it in some other tab. So again, don't worry about streaming past 1080p. Don't feel like you need to spend the extra money for 2K or 4K. Okay, I need to look up how to do Xbox One. Well, there you go. Uh, let's see. You to do monitors. You can certainly work with just one. I have three, but having more will allow you to monitor additional things concurrently streaming like Discord, OBS if you're playing a PC game, and a browser, and all sorts of other things. I have like 10 other windows open right now. I have four windows. I have the script open on the top here, on the top left. I have OBS open in the bottom left. I have uh, stream, I have a stream deck open in the top right. I have chat in the bottom right. Uh, I have everything laid out for me. So having multiple monitors is nice, and if you want to get them, just grab the cheapest monitors you can find on Craigslist. Uh, I was able to get mine for like 20 bucks. Uh, it may be a little bit more expensive now because of technology shortages, but you can get cheap monitors on Craigslist. Extra monitors are life. I do it for work, but it changes your way of doing things. It really does. Xbox actually has an app on PC that allows you to stream your screen without a capture card called, called Console Companion. It doesn't work very well, but it is an option if you can't get a capture card. Thank you for contributing that, Game Master. I actually did not know that. So yeah, apparently, uh, Console Companion works if you have an Xbox. And do you know what generation of Xbox that works on? I can never go back to single monitor? True. Same. 
I, I'm about that multi-monitor life. I'm surprised I was able to go down from four to three. I actually don't use the big one in the back for a uh, computer monitor. I just use that for gaming. Uh, because Just because of the way that the HDMI's work, if I plug it in and unplug it, then it messes all the windows up. Otherwise, I would absolutely have it. I'd stuck with one monitor for now. Yeah, again, you can absolutely work with one monitor. That's not a problem. In fact, we'll, sh we'll work on how to do it with one monitor. We'll assume later when we're setting up OBS that we have one monitor to work with. So we'll, se we'll set it up that way. I know any Xbox One works. Not sure about the Series X. Nice. All right, uh, let's see. We covered lighting. We covered webcam. Uh, last two things are computer specs and internet connection. These two things are also important. You're going to want eight gigs of RAM minimum on your computer. If you don't have eight gigs, you can definitely upgrade it, even if it's a laptop. Uh, it, an SSD, if you're planning on recording f uh, locally for VODs, Otherwise, you don't need an SSD. You can have a hard drive. And again, that is upgradable, even if you have a laptop. Uh, and you're going to want a decent CPU and GPU. Uh, just uh, the GPU for the, re for the rendering aspect of OBS and the CPU for the streaming aspect. Uh, but, you know, you've got, you've got what you've got, so we'll make do with, with what we have. Uh, you can check your RAM and hard drive type using Task Manager. So if I open Task Manager here, uh, you can open Task Manager on your computer by hitting Control Shift Escape. You know, like Control Alt Delete opens the um, like the restart window and everything. Control Shift Escape opens Task Manager. If you've never expanded it before, Task Manager will look like this, where all of your programs are. Uh, all, it's only showing the programs in the forefront, you know, it's the simple interface. But if you hit more details, you get this nice big interface that shows how much resources the individual programs are using. So you can see here OBS is consuming uh, almost 3 gigs of RAM, consuming 10% of my CPU, and a very high amount of power usage. So yeah, uh, I've got a lot going on in my OBS. It takes a lot to run this inter- to like run this layout. Uh, but here, if you click over to the performance tab here, you can see uh, all of your individual resources in full. So you can see here 19% of my CPU is being used at with a speed of three, about 3.8 gigahertz, which is pretty good. Uh, my memory, I am currently using about 12 out of 32 gigabytes, so you can figure out how much RAM you have here by looking at the second number, the total number. It should be at least 8, round up. So if you have 7.9, that's 8. Uh, do you, anything, a, anything 8 or more is fine, but if you have 4 or 2, like God forbid you have 2, uh, you're going to want to upgrade. Uh, your disks here, any disks that you have in the computer, again, if you want to if you want to record locally, you're going to need an SSD and it will say SSD, otherwise it'll say HD or HDD, which stands for hard drive. That's fine if you only want to stream and have Twitch record your VODs and we'll show and I'll show you how to set that up. And then you, as you can see here, 60% of my GPU is being used because I've got a really complicated layout to render for OBS. And it's rendering it at 60 FPS, so it's it's working hard. Thank you, GPU. All right, and then internet connection. In order to stream, you're going to want 100 megabits per second stable minimum upload speed. Uh, people will tell you that you need like a gig. You do not need a gig. You only need about a hundred. Uh, in order to make sure that you have that good upload speed, I highly recommend plugging an Ethernet cable into your computer from the router. Just get like a hundred foot Ethernet cable and run it to your computer. I don't care what you have to do to do it. You better do it. Uh, otherwise, take uh, if you can, move your computer closer to the router. And if your router has a 5G setting on it, go on that setting. Like, go on the 5G network. The, five, the difference between 5G and 2.4G is, what speed did I say was good? 100 upload. Or maybe you could probably even get away with 50 upload. Uh, but the you want to be close to the router, physically close to the router, especially if you're doing, five gi doing it on the 5 gig. Because uh, the difference between 5 gig and 2.4 gig, 5 gig is stronger 
but doesn't have as much range. 2.4 is weaker, but has a wider range. Because of that, all of the IoT devices in your house, like a smart fridge or like a desk, like, like, a, like anything that uses the internet in your home or a smart TV, uses the 2.4 gigahertz band. So you are sharing bandwidth on the 2.4 gigahertz band with everything else in your home. Yeah, think about that. You have, you, so you're, you're not in very good luck if you're using the 2.4 gig band. So get close to the, to the router and use five. How, where do I check that? Uh, you can check your internet speed by going to the internet Googling speed test and then Google Oh, I'm on Ecosia. I need that's a different uh, brow. That's a different search engine So if you Google and specifically Google it has to be Google speed test Google has a built-in speed test So then you just hit run speed test and as you can see I've got th about 300 megabits per second down and If we give it a moment, it'll solidify that score and hit us with the upload speed and now, and I've got a little over 320 megabits per second up. So I've got a pretty stable connection. And you want to know a fun fact? I'm on Wi-Fi. See, I see my computer is close to the to the router, and it's using the five gig band. So I have very stable internet, despite the fact I'm using Wi-Fi. All right. So that's going to be it for equipment. Next up, we are going to. We are finally, finally, going to open OBS. Now, before, before I get started here showing you how to set up your scenes and everything, I'm going to explain a little something. You might be aware that the usual options for streaming are OBS and Streamlabs OBS. I am going to tell you now that for multiple reasons, you should not use Streamlabs OBS. OBS is the much better option, raw OBS. The reason, the first reason being, Streamlabs is a shady company. You may have heard some controversy recently where the, a, there was a service that came out uh, that wasn't by Streamlabs, that offered overlays to people streaming from consoles, which, you know, is a really cool feature. Console streamers didn't have that feature before, so a company created that. Then Streamlabs, a while later, off created the same feature, and when they launched it, their web page was copy-paste from the other company. Even the reviews were word for the reviews were word for word the same and they got called out on it so hard and you know what they did they apologized but then OBS fired back and gave us a little bit of a little tidbit OBS apparently uh, one or Streamlabs apparently once reached out to OBS when they were getting started saying hey can we use the name OBS can we call ourselves Streamlabs OBS? And OBS said, no. And you know what Streamlabs did? They did it anyways. And not only did they do it anyways, they filed a trademark on the name OBS. How shitty of a move is that? Because OBS is open source, they didn't have a trademark on it. But then, they f but then Streamlabs went ahead and took advantage of that and filed the trademark. The people at Streamlabs are plagiarizers. Yes, that's exactly it, Game Master. Now that's the first reason why you shouldn't use Streamlabs. That's the, that's the ethical reason why you shouldn't use Streamlabs. The practical reasons are twofold. One, a lot of the cool features that are on Streamlabs are locked behind a paywall. And Streamlabs is just trying to take advantage of small streamers who don't know better and are going to continually pay them a non-returning cost uh, per month, no matter how big they are, to use their service. That sucks. I mean, you can use Streamlabs for free, but you can't, but as you evolve as a streamer, you're not going to have access to those, to those better tools until you start paying up the dough. 
And that, uh, and honestly, that kind of sucks. Like, I just recently wanted to, you know, start up updating my stream and making things cool. I don't want to start paying Streamlabs for that. I'm still not at that stage. I've heard that OBS wipes the floor with Streamlabs, and that's the other op, and that's the other reason. OBS is so much better than Streamlabs. Holy shit. It has so many more features. Not out of the box, not out of the box, mind you, but OBS, remind, let me remind you, is open source, meaning that anyone can create plugins for it, and there are so many good plugins for OBS. You can do some really, really freaking cool shit with OBS. You just have to install the plugins for it. So as you evolve, you can yes, plugins everywhere. As you evolve, you can learn OB, learn more about OBS, install plugins, and really create some cool stuff for your stream. I have plugins running right now. As a matter of fact, you see the rounded corners on these things and the shape and like the and like the borders on things. That's plugins. Those are plugins doing that. You see the text that's scrolling. That's a plugin doing that. We got, I got plugins up the wazoo, baby. And you think I could do that on Streamlabs for free? Hell no. So OBS all the way, and I'm going to show you OBS because it is free. Whew. All right, rant over. Let's, uh, let, let's, let's show how to set up OBS. So uh, download and install OBS and open it up. Uh, here you'll see your preview screen, which is currently black because we do not have any sources to view. Also get way more errors and frame drops on Streamlabs compared to OBS. That, that, I've seen a few people, yeah, get more, get more dropped frames on Streamlabs. Uh, I had, a, I have a friend, Lofti, you may know him. He was on Streamlabs when I first met him, but then he changed to, I convinced him to change to OBS and his stream dropped so many less frames. His stream was so much cleaner once he switched to OBS. I, like that's just a personal story. I don't know if that's true for everyone. I won't I won't slander uh, Streamlabs inappropriately, but that is what happened Not only is Streamlabs in a bunch of hot water because of some theft of copyright claims or some shit like that OBS is just easier to use anyways. Absolutely Waiting actually for the voice meter banana part. Luyuki. I have a wonderful wonderful answer for you We're going to get there All right so first, when you open it, you've got your preview here, which currently has nothing on it because we haven't introduced any sources. See, sources are the bread and butter components of your scene. They are going to, they're going to, they're what's going to display things on your stream. So over here in the bottom left, you see you'll have scenes. Scenes are basically collections of sources for to display so for example one scene i might have a scene for starting soon which i do have you'll see it over here so that's my starting soon uh scene and this is my 16 by 9 scene where i but where i display things that are in 16 by 9 aspect ratio, like gaming and uh, monitor display, because monitors are 16 by 9. So you'll have different scenes for stuff like that. You'll have one for intermission, for like ending stream, for uh, maybe one for DS gameplay, because you need to display it differently. Uh, also, all sorts of different scenes that you can create. And you can also create things called nested scenes, which we'll get into in a little bit. But once you have, we're just gonna start with the basic scene that we've been given here. And then we have sources. Sources are, again, are the bread and butter. That's where we get all of our things. You see here, we have. Uh, if I hit the plus button, it's going to give me all the options for sources that I can create. Uh, the ones that it comes with, you keep in mind, I have extension, I have plugins installed. Uh, you can get audio input capture, which captures like microphones, audio output capture, which captures like desktop audio, audio that is currently being routed to speakers or headphones. Uh, you've got your browser source, which we'll get into in a bit. Color source, which is literally just a cut like a block of color. Uh, display capture, game capture, and window capture, which we'll get into in a bit. Actually, real soon. Image, which is just a static image. Image slideshow, which is what I use for joining the stage crew over there. Uh, media source, which is not as good as VLC video source but it essentially plays media, so like a video or music, you can have it play that. 
Uh, the end. Uh, let's see. No, not the NDI source. That's a plugin. Uh, scene. You can you can insert scenes. That's nested scenes. We'll get into that. Uh, let's see. Text. So if you want text to appear on the screen, you can just create that. Uh, and then video capture device. That would be used if you're using a capture card or a webcam. And uh, groups. We'll get into groups in a bit. Now. One thing I will say about sources is that they are layered. Meaning that the higher up they are on the list, the more that the more they appear, sorry, the more stuff they appear over. So they'll appear so anything up at the top will appear over the stuff that's beneath it. So say you want you say you have your gameplay, right? That's covering the whole screen. You don't have a background or anything. You just have the whole gameplay and you want to insert a webcam on top of the gameplay. The webcam will have to sit above the gameplay in the sources list in order for the webcam to appear. And you can move sources up and down using these two up and down arrows right here. Over here, you have your audio mixer, which is going to show you all of the audio sources that you have uh, and whether they're playing, what, what volume that they're playing at. And here you have your controls, which is going to be your controls for starting streaming, your starting recording, your settings, studio mode, all that stuff. So this is a helpful one to have. Uh, don't worry about scene transitions, that's advanced stuff. Uh, and if you don't see any of these things when you first open OBS, because remember this is my custom uh, display that I have set up over the several over several months, you can hit the view button in the top left here, go to docs, and there, all of these things will be available to see. So if say you don't see uh, controls, you can just go to view docs and hit controls and it will appear. Or uh, what I can, what I would like to see right now is my stream information. So your stream information is just going to include things like your stream title, the go live notification, the category, which is essentially the game you're playing, and your tags. Also your stream language, which I, but I don't use that because I speak in English. So for setting this up, you want to give your title something catchy. Only the first, I think, 46 characters of the title are seen when displayed on the big list. You know, like if someone searches, say, Rocket League, and they open the Rocket League page to see all the streams, only the first 46 characters are visible to them. Everything else is dot, dot, dot. So put the important stuff at the front of the, at the front of the title. That's gonna be your grabber. Then you're going, then your no, go live notifications. A lot of people just leave it blank. They'll leave it as blank is going live. I wouldn't suggest doing that because that doesn't give any indication as to what you are doing in stream. The title does not display on the go live notification. All it says is blank is live and then whatever you write in here. So give some sort of indication as to what you are doing so that people know when they come in or like to give incentive for them to come in. The important stuff plus 18 girl ASMR. <laughs> that would be a that would be a very popular stream, Luki. You're not wrong. <laughs> okay, you set your category, you set your tags. Uh, tags that I like to use often include casual playthrough and 100%. Uh, otherwise, tags will usually autom automatically be added and removed because they're attached to certain games and categories. Like if you say, for example, you put in a Mario game, it'll most often come up with the adventure tag automatically. It's a really nice feature. All right, we went over that. Uh, let's see, do, 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 recommend. Okay, so I recommend, so going back to sources, I recommend putting, actually, we'll get to that when we get to audio sources. Uh, let's see here, we look, went over stream information. Creating your stream layout. Okay, we're gonna create we're gonna create a stream layout, everybody. So first off, I am going to add in that image that we created earlier for Ronald. So I'm going to hit the plus button on sources and I'm going to select image. Then the score. Yo, Tom, welcome back. Let's go. Uh, once we create the image, 
or once we create the source, it's going to ask us whether we want to add an existing source that we created in another scene, or if we want to create a new one. So we're creating a new one in this case, and I'm just gonna call it background. And yeah, and we want to leave make source visible checked so that it appears visible when it is created. So I'm going to create that, and then it's going to ask me to find the image file. I'm going to hit browse. I'm going to navigate to my downloads where I have it and put it right there. Now you don't need to worry about those other options. And would you look at that? We now have a background for our stream. What do you know? That's pretty, I think that looks pretty cool. All right, so we've got our background. Now let's say we want to add in our game capture. Let's say we're, let's say that we are uh, not using a capture card. So if you were using a capture card, you would create a video capture device, which I could then call like capture card. Hit OK. It's going to create the source, and then for me, the device would be the Live Gamer Mini. Of course, I can't use that right now because I'm running another instance of OBS to run the stream, so it's not accessible. Same goes for the webcam, but that's essentially what you would create. So that's a, so that's what would go there. And if you ever want to change these things, like let's say you want to ch finally guide on how to make it hardcore. <laughs> <laughs> That's amazing, Zoo. What is up? Welcome to the pit. Yes, this is a guide on how to make it hardcore. Okay, so let's say you want to change what image this is. Usually, if you'll click on if you click on a source, it, there's a little bar here that will come up that will uh, give you like the main aspect, the main property that people like to change. So for image source, it uh, allows me to change what image I'm using. So if I want to change it to something else, I can. Like uh, my good friend EB, he has this uh, he has this new emote. I think it looks pretty cool. We'll add that. Nah, wait, this is the background source. I'm going to change that back. So if I want to change it back, I can either use the prompt right here or I can double click on the source to open the properties window. I can also right click on the source and hit properties. Then from there, I can hit browse, select, and bada bing, bada boom, my background is back. So for now, I am just going to create a color source and I'm going to call it... Well, actually, you know what? Even better. So let's say that our game source is not coming from a capture card. Let's say that our game source is coming from like a window, like we're doing a PC game. So if you're doing a PC game, you have a couple options on what source you can use to capture that. You can either use A, a game capture source, B, a display capture source, or C, a window capture source. Those are all the options you have for capturing a video game on your PC. Now, here's the thing. I'm going to tell you now why you should always, always, always use window capture especially if you are a single monitor streamer. So, first of all, game capture. Don't use it ever, there is no purpose. It is buggy, it doesn't work for all games, it has very lim is very limited with little benefit, and I have never used it. Seriously, don't use game capture, it's useless. It's only gonna make things worse. If you have good experience with game capture, let me know. I have never heard anyone have good experience with it. Everyone just tells me don't use it. Uh, display capture. I would not. This is the other. This is the one that most people default to when they want to start streaming. Don't default to display capture. I have display capture on right now so you can see everything that I'm doing. But that's the thing about display capture. It shows everything that you are doing. So if you're on a single monitor, right? and you're playing a game, and you want to click away from the game to go check on something, like Discord. When you do that, you're going to show Discord on the stream. And let's say you don't want people seeing your Discord. In fact, there's a lot of things on your computer that you probably don't want people seeing. For example, your IP address, your browser bookmarks, your device location, your programs, your desktop icons, your wallpaper, and any open tabs in a browser that you have. You don't want people seeing them nudes, exactly. Let's say you wanna check your nudes in the middle of a stream. You don't want people seeing that. 
That's, yeah, your browser history, exactly. There's so many things you don't want people seeing. So I am being very careful. I have plotted out this whole stream and I know that I am not going to show you anything risque or anything that is risky to me. Yeah, so point is you don't want people seeing stuff when you click away from the game. You want the game to stay on screen, which is why you should use window capture. Always use window capture for capturing your game. It is versatile. It keeps the focus on your desired content, even if you have to pull up other things like OBS, for example, when you're streaming. Uh, it's very useful when streaming on one monitor, like I said. It works even when minimized, so even if you minimize the game, it will still show the game. It does not work on- however, uh, one thing you should know is it does not work on full screen games. So if you go to the game settings and it says full screen, I think all, most if not all games have this option, turn that off. It has to be in windowed mode in order to be captured by window capture. So just set it to windowed mode and you should be able to capture it. Don't have it in full screen. It's a bit annoying, but it's certainly better than the alternative. You know, it all... Ah. Guys, I don't have seven tabs of Google Images results for hot men. That was just a hacker. <laughs> True. There are also some games that have windowed full screen. True. Windowed full screen. That's a thing you can do. Most often when you window it, you can full screen it. That's, that's a thing that's possible. Windowed full screen is what you want to do. All right, so yes, window cap, case in point, window capture for PC games or for browsers or whatever you want to show on stream, window capture. Very rarely do you want to use display capture. And if you are using display capture, plan very carefully what you are going to show on stream. Yeah, so there's none of the pesky borders, true. All right, so when you add a video capture device, uh, such as a webcam or a capture card, what do you do when the capture card freezes or fails to show? That has happened to me multiple times before, even during stream. Here are the options that you want to go through to get it resolved while continuing streaming. One, deactivate and reactivate the source. So let's say I create a video capture device. You'll see here, there's an option here and down here to deactivate. Deactivate it and reactivate it. That's usually, that's a software reset and it usually works. If that doesn't work, then you should verify that you have the right device selected. So for example, if I go to the properties here, I should make sure that I, if I want to capture my capture card, I am selecting the Live Gamer Mini from the list here. Uh, so if you've checked that and that works out, verify that no other programs are actively using that device. Uh, streaming devices for like webcams and capture cards can only be ran by one program at a time. Make sure no other program is currently using that device, such as if you're streaming on Discord as well. It can only be used on one. Let's see here. Uh, try unplugging and replugging the USB cable from the device. So try unplugging it and replugging it from the PC. See if that works. Uh, try unplugging other USB devices. Uh, there was a st I have a bit of a story for when I first got my capture card. Uh, I had my capture card and my camera plugged into my computer and the capture card was having a lot of glitchy issues. I called up tech support and they uh, and we finally got down to the root issue the two devices were competing with each other on the same usb lane so your computer has multiple usb lanes usually it's one lane for 2.0 ports and another lane for 3.0 ports and another lane for 3.1 ports like the different speed port usb ports you have try putting the devices on other ports or unplug other USB devices. The webcam or the capture device might not have enough bandwidth to work with. It was a very annoying thing for me, but I'm glad I got it solved. Uh, check all the HDMI connections uh, for, the, for capture cards and for, uh, in the case of capture cards, make sure the HDMI is plugged in properly into the source, into the capture card, uh, out of the capture card, make sure those are all plugged in correctly. Uh, then once you've done all that, that's about everything that you can do while continuing stream. Uh, beyond that, you're going to have to close and reopen OBS. 
restart the computer, and if none of that works, call tech support. They'll help you out. But that's what you should do. Those are the steps you should take when uh, troubleshooting a capture card or a, or a webcam. Any video capture device. All right, so let's, uh, real quick, let's say you wanted to speed run, right? So I can create a window capture here. So this is what you would do if you were trying to capture a PC game as well. You would create a new window capture. I'm gonna call it Live, sp live Splits, right? And would you look at that, it already selected it. But if, I, if it didn't pick it correctly, uh, then I would select, hit this drop down for window here and select live split and I currently have live split open somewhere else in fact I could pull it on screen here see here's live split so I just have that open somewhere else and then I can capture it on screen so if I start the timer I can get my splits So that's something you can do if you're speedrunning. Right now I have my uh, Super Mario Odyssey Rock, Paper, Scissors splits open. Got that 1201, baby. Let's go. All right, audio. Now we have audio. So let's, so, you know, you're streaming. What's the name of the software? Again, I've been needing one for timers and like to race people sometimes. It's called Live Split. I'll, I'll type that in chat. Live Split. That's what I use. That's what, that's what a lot of people use. It's highly customizable, uh, pretty dang versatile, and uh, pretty lightweight. All right, so now we're going to create some audio sources. Now one, now, one little trick that I recently learned that I think you can make use of when you're starting out is you can create, go down here to the bottom left, and click the plus on the scene tab. There, you can type in, I'm just gonna type in nested audio. So that's gonna create a new scene here, and so you see everything from my previous scene went away. So now I've just got a, uh, a black preview again. But that's fine, because here, we're just going to add our audio sources. So here, I'm going to add an audio input capture. I'm going to call it mic for my microphone. Going to hit OK. And I am going to select my device. In this case, it is the device from my Focusrite uh, interface. In your case, it's probably going to be a USB thing like this, which is coming from my uh, my headset over here, which I should really unplug. So I'm going to select my microphone, hit OK, and now you can see down here in the audio mixer, it is picking up my voice from the microphone. So now, so now we've got that set up. But you also may notice... That when I make small, when I make, like, breathe into the microphone, or if I, uh... If I tap it a little bit, it still picks up noise. And if I had more noise going on around me, like a fan running or something, it would pick that up too. Not to mention, if I yell really loud, HEY! It, uh, it tops out, and that would really hurt your listeners' ears. So we are actually going to add some filters to this. So you go, these are the filters that I recommend for putting on your mic. Now filters, filters as a concept can be applied to images, videos, and audio. And audio. So in the case of audio, these filters include the likes of noise, noise gates, noise reduction, compressors, limiters, equal EQ. So yeah, these are, these are going to be all your options for audio filters. Uh, real quick, if I go back to the scene here, to the other scene here that I created, and I cl right click on background and hit filters. Ah, and filters, yes. So then I can add effect filters. These include like cropping, uh, chroma keys. If you have like a green screen background, you would get rid of the green screen using a chroma key. Uh, you can do render delay, which delays the amount of time that uh, your scene is rendered. I actually use that for media share to sync the media share with my camera. Uh, and a lot of other cool things. You'll see a lot of options here that are not in standard OBS. That's again, because I have plugins. But we'll get to that later. For now, I'm gonna set some filters on my microphone. 
So the first thing I'll add is noise suppression. Noise suppression is simply going to take the audio from the audio from the mic and it's going to try to get rid of any background noise. Now, the two options for this are RN noise, which is a um, which is an AI based thing, and speaks. Now, I highly recommend using Speaks because the AI, while the AI does a really good job, like a much better job of picking out the noise, if your voice ever becomes distorted, like say, for example, if you scream into the microphone, it'll cut out your voice too. That actually happened to me a lot when I was starting out until I finally figured out, oh, it's my noise suppression cutting me out. So I highly recommend using Speaks unless you plan on never screaming, which, you know, not, not everyone screams. Then again, Speaks also has lo has a lower CPU usage, so you know, save resources using Speaks. Uh, you're just going to want to, what you're going to want to do is you're going to want to go to the audio mixer, see this little cog wheel next to the mic, click that, and on the new drop down menu, hit Advanced Audio Properties. That's going to open this window here. Then you're going to want to go to the mic row and go to the tab Audio Monitoring. What that essentially means is it's going to play audio back to you. So if I so if monitor off means that audio I am not hearing what this audio is generating. But if I hit monitor and output, I can now hear myself. Yep, I didn't do, I didn't do it. I can now hear myself. So now that I can hear myself, I can change the level of suppression uh, it dynamically so I can just adjust this until I feel like the proper amount of noise is deleted it's also a little hard to speak with the um, the audio playing back at you because it has a delay but you essentially want to come up with the smallest number you can where the sound where the noise is minimized you're not going to get rid of the noise but you can minimize it so now that you have that set up, you're going to want to set up a noise gate. What the noise gate is going to do is it's going to completely cut off the microphone when you are not speaking. So there's no like annoying hum going on when there's no sound coming from you. So you, with this, you're going to want to essentially do the same thing. Take the open threshold right here on the second row and move that until the audio complete and start at the bottom and then move up until the audio is completely cut out when you are not speaking and cuts back in when you are speaking. You may want to speak in a little bit of a softer tone for this one just uh, so that you can be sure that the microphone will still pick up your voice when you are speaking softly. So let's say I find my happy medium right here at negative 48 dB. I'm going to take my close threshold and I'm going to slap that just a little bit below the open. And then you don't need to worry about any of the other settings. And there you go, that's your noise gate. All right, now that you've done that, uh, we're going to tackle a little something called volume range or dynamic range as it's often referred to. So normally when you speak, you have a very wide dynamic range, meaning a range of volumes that you can create. I can speak very softly and I can speak very loudly. Now the thing about that is if that's going directly to your viewers, they can't set a proper volume on the video such that you, their ears don't get blown out when you get loud or when a loud noise happens, something, you know, maybe you bump the mic a little hard and it makes a So you don't, you want to prevent stuff from like that from happening, but you also want to de you want to bring up the quieter sounds because say you're talking like this in a normal voice, but then say something happens like you're in a horror game and you're getting into it and you're like, I, I, I'm just hiding guys, I'm just hiding, I'm just, I, uh, uh. Like, I, I'm just hiding here. I want to be quiet. I want to simulate like I'm actually in the game. If you if you don't have adjustment for that, then they're not going to be able to hear you whispering. So in order to bring up the quieter sounds, we're going to use a compressor. The compressor, what it does is it takes your dynamic range and it compresses it. It brings the, the quieter sounds up in volume and leaves the louder volumes alone. So that now when the user, the viewer sets their audio, sets their volume, 
they can set it to a volume where they'll hear you when you're speaking softly and when you're speaking loudly. But you still have that issue of what if you scream, scream into the microphone, it gets loud. So in order to fix that, we need to add a limiter. The, what the limiter is going to do is it's just going to set a value for which the volume shall not pass. I set it around minus 10, but I've noticed I'm a little louder compared to other streamers. So maybe you want to set it around like minus 12 or minus 13. And you don't need to worry about release. The limiter is the easiest one to set. Uh, once you have your limiter set, you can go back to your compressor and adjust the ratio to bring up your volume to where it gets close when you're normally speaking to the, uh, to the limit that you set. I think it is pretty good. Let's see. The, so actually, sorry, the ratio sets how much it compresses the range. So if I speak softly into the microphone, it should come up to a pretty good value. So if I do this, uh, bring it up, and there we go. Yep, that seems good right there. So when I speak softly, it gets to around minus 20, which is still a pretty good range, but still audible. Then I can set the th then I can set the output gain if I'm too quiet and raise that up to where my normal speaking voice is close to the limit I set, which in this case is minus 13. So see, I'm speaking normally, and the peak of the uh, audio is hitting that limiter just barely. So there we go, and now your audio is set up. Now your audio is nice and crisp. Of course, how good it sounds is entirely dependent on your microphone, which is why you need to have a good microphone. But that's going to prevent clipping. It's going to prevent people from uh, blowing their ears out when they're listening to you. It's going to prevent sound, like noise from coming in the background. That is how you make a nice sounding mic. And I'm going to turn monitor and output off to monitor off because uh, it gets really annoying when you're listening to it in your head. So this is the this is the chain the filter chain that I set up on my microphone. All right. So we're going to so now we're going to close that. Our microphone is now fully set, and we're also going to want our desktop audio. So you know if we play music from a browser, but you know, don't play licensed music, play video game music, that's a good cheat. Uh, you're going to want to set an audio output capture and that is go that we're going to label desktop. So then you're going to want to grab the audio going to your headphones, which in this case is my uh, Focusrite USB audio. And now you see, Hmm. Actually, in this case, I believe because I have voice meter set up, uh, it's going to be this one. Is it this one? It's this one. Okay. So yeah, because I have voice meter set up, it's something else. But you can also, if you want, put a limiter on the desktop audio to prevent that from clipping if you play something a little too loud. Quick note, not all video game music is safe, Perf particularly Square Enix music tends to be copyrighted. Exactly, yes. You have to be aware of what music is and is not copyrighted. You should probably look it up per game. Uh, music that is typically safe, uh, Nintendo music, like, you know, Mario music and Sonic music. Those are both usually safe. All right, so we got the desktop audio set up. So you can see here the music that we're playing in the background is coming through. Uh, I've got my mic coming through. So let so now, Luyuki, uh, let's get into that topic of voice meter. So here I have got my voice meter. I've got my hardware, my first hardware input is coming. Yeah, let's go, voice meter. So the way I've got my voice meter set up, uh, you, when you get voice meter, I have voice meter banana, which allows me three hardware inputs and two virtual, two virtual inputs and two virtual outputs. So what that allows me to do is it allows me to separate one application in particular from the, de from the overall desktop audio. In this case, I separate discord. So I have discord running to the aux output the aux output, and I have my desktop audio running to the regular output. Both of these go to my headphones still because of voice meter, but the it I don't need to worry about 
the Discord audio being uh, mixing in with the desktop audio because I can separate the sources in OBS. But you know what? I just recently learned about something and voice meter is now completely fucking useless, baby. Who needs voice meter anymore when you've got wind capture audio? V VB cable setup, you don't fucking need it. You don't need it anymore. We got this shit now. Check this shit. Win capture audio, baby. This is a plugin for OBS, so this does not work on Streamlabs. Streamlabs does not have this. You, it is a plugin that you install for OBS that is as simple as, you know what? I'll just show you. I'll just show you. I have it installed in OBS. Let's say I want to capture audio from. Let's say I want to capture audio. Like I'm gonna get rid of my desktop audio. Let's say I want to capture audio from Discord. I just go up to here, the plugin adds this new source, application audio output capture. Uh, I just create that source and I'm gonna call it Discord. I'm gonna hit OK. And then I'm just gonna select Window. I'm going to find Discord. And bada bing, bada boom. It captures only Discord. You can see here I've got music playing in the background, not showing up here because that's not coming from Discord. So, but let's say I want to capture that audio that is playing, for, that's playing from Mozilla Firefox. I'm going to add application audio output capture. I'm going to call it Firefox. Gonna hit OK. Window. Let's see, Firefox. And boom, look at that. The audio is playing from Firefox. You don't need it anymore. You don't need to do any complicated routing with voice meter anymore. Just get this goddamn plugin. I have com like I have yet to completely abandon voice meter because it's still helpful for one thing for me. Uh I have my it see you see it's helpful for two things. Uh still. One is because I have a an audio interface which uses the Osseo encoding interface, which does not work uh too does not work too well with OBS. So I have my Osseo input from my microphone running into here. I've changed it from I've changed it to a mono because if I don't set it to mono, now you'll only hear me in your left ear. You will only hear me in your left ear when I speak like this. And now you'll hear me in both ears. OBS flexing on Streamlabs yet again, common OBSW, common SLL. I was asking about voice meter because I use it for general use. Ah, uh, okay. Uh, fair enough. But the but yeah, if you want to set it up for, for personal use, that's perfectly fine. But in the case of streaming, where you want to isolate different programs and filter them separately, you just need the plugin. That's all you need. You don't need to go through all this complicated voice meter crap. All right, so yeah, that was uh, that. That is just get that plugin. It is called again Win Capture Audio by Bo Bozbez on GitHub. Uh, we isolated that. Okay, so when I ha once I have my Discord, I'm actually going to go to filters and I'm going to apply a limiter to that as well because you don't have control over other people's microphones on Discord. So I'm just going to go to Discord. I'm going to set the limiter to just about the same as what I have my mic set at. So if anyone tries to blow out their microphone on disc on a Discord call with you, it the people on the other end aren't going to hear it. Now, once we have all of our audio sources set up here, let's say we want to let well, we we pro we probably want them here in our streaming scene so you know people can hear us. Right now, if I was streaming from the scene, nobody would be able to hear me because my microphone is not there. So what I do now is I hit I hit plus on sources and I add a scene. Now I add the the nested audio scene that we create that we created and boom, all of our audio sources are now here. And if I create another scene, let's say I create scene 2 and I want to add all the audio sources there, I just do the same thing. Boom! All my audio sources. So I don't need to add or move them or change them individually. I can just have them all in one nested scene. 
Yo, Ronald, thank you so much for the follow. Thank you so much. You have no idea how much I appreciate it. I, gen I genuinely appreciate that. Also, what did y'all what did y'all think of the new animation? What what'd you think? I worked hard on that. I actually le I learned how to I learned how to animate in Blender for that. I learned how to do 2D rigging for that. I also have one set up for subscribe if anyone wants to uh <laughs> subscribe. Uh, let's see here. Uh we did that. Okay, yeah. So yeah, you, I have explained why you put the nested audio in. I would recommend putting the nested audio scene at the bottom of the sources because it one, it's not visual, so it doesn't need to sit above anything. And two, it's just kind of out of the way. You know, you just kind of leave it there. You don't need to mess around with it because if you need to mess around with your audio sources, you just go to the nested audio scene and mess around with it there. So you can just leave your nested audio scene down at the bottom here and not worry about it. All right, so now we've got now we've got our splits up. We've uh, we've assumedly got our gameplay. Let's say now that we want to add our webcam. So remember how I said you can use your phone as a webcam? Let me explain how to do that. So there's this little service called VDO.ninja. So video.ninja. That's VDO.ninja. And essentially what it is, is it allows you to stream video from one device to another device over the internet. Bear in mind, this isn't a completely secure connection. Anyone with the code can uh, access your stream, access the streaming video. But in, in the case of using it for streaming, it's actually very good. It's actually very good. So the way to do that, and I'll use this as an example. So, ah, no, wait, not this. I would go to OBS and I create what a new browser source. So browser sources just take information from the internet and put it onto your screen. So in this case, I'm going to call it webcam or we'll call it ninja webcam. Cheap phone is better than a cheap webcam. True true even if you have like an iphone 6 it's webcam it's video quality will still be better than like a 20 dollar webcam so whatever web so whatever phone you have it's probably gonna have really good video so i am going so when you create a new obs or a new browser source in obs it's going to ask you for a url this is where it's going to pull the information from so let's say i type in google.com and hit OK. Hey, look, it's Google. Look at that. So it just pulled that information off of the internet. But what we want is this. We want video.ninja slash, and I'm going to make a code for it. We're going to call it, or sorry, video.ninja slash question mark view equals, I'm going to say hardcore one, two, three. Actually, we'll call it 427. That's my number. Hardcore 427. All right, and I'm going to hit OK. Now, nothing's going to show up because I'm not currently streaming anything. But now, if I go on my phone and I go to my, brow go to my browser and I type in the following, which I'm going to type on screen now, video dot ninja slash question mark push equals and then whatever I entered before so in this case hardcore 427 so I'm going to type that in video dot ninja slash question mark push equals hardcore 427 it's gonna come up with this screen here that asked me to share my camera. I'm gonna hit OK. Then it's gonna load the camera, so you can see here it's loading the camera. And then you can set your, you can actually capture audio from this as well. Then you just hit start. Stick, Stick that, that up, up right, right there. there. You'll actually You'll hear, hear it now. now. And if, and if I, I go, go back, back to OBS, OBS look, at, look that. at that. 
I literally just have this sitting with one of those, um, those, those things, things uh, that go on top of your, that go on the back of the phone, the, 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 the thing that pops out, and I just have that sitting on my monitor. And now I have a webcam, look at that. It's actually That's pretty, pretty good, good too. too. Let's say Let's I want to crop, crop this. this. There are there actually two, two ways to crop, crop it. it. One, One is you right click, you hit filters, filters then, you then you add, add an, an effect, effect filter, filter, crop pad. pad. And then, then from, from there, there we just, let's say we want to crop, crop from the right, right so get rid of this, this uh, wall over here. here. I'm just gonna go to right, and I'm gonna punch in, I don't know, like 400. Boom, look at that. That's pretty good. I think that looks pretty good. Uh, the uh, other, other way, way to do, to do it, it. So, so let's say, say I, don't I don't want to do it by creating a filter, filter. I, can I can hit minus, minus on that to delete it, it. and then, and then I, I can press alt, press and hold alt on my keyboard, keyboard. Click, click on the, on right, the right side, and just, and drag, just drag it in, in and that'll crop it. it. And I can and crop, crop it from the top too, and crop it from the bottom, and then bada bing bada boom. I've been lurking, lurking, but those filters, filters help me out with my mic. Sounds, Sounds good, good Freezy. Welcome, Welcome to the pit. pit. Thank, you, Thank so you so much for the lurk, my dude. dude. I like to, I appreciate, I appreciate seeing, seeing you here. here. So yeah. So, yeah. Um, um, and, and if you, you say, say, hold on, I'm gonna delete this, this because I can I hear, hear myself. myself. Uh, uh, sources, sources that come from. Actually, actually, I'm just gonna delete it. There we go. Okay, cool. So yeah, that's how that's how you do it with the uh, with the webcam. What is my next stream? That is going to be Friday at 8 p.m. ET. I am going to be playing a game, a random game. Who knows what? For, I, for iOS users, there's Droid Cam. I have not checked into Droid Cam, but VDO.Ninja works no matter what phone you have because it's browser based. Remember hearing something about it not working? Really? But I haven't checked. Okay. Uh, maybe try it out if you're an iOS user. Try video.ninja, see if it works. Uh, if not, then you may want to check into Droid Cam, like Luyuki's saying. All right, so that is, so when you when you set that up, when you set up your browser source, as long as you keep that phrase that you put at the end, in my case, hardcore four two seven, then you can continually return. You can keep the browser source the same and continually go back to the page to the browser page on your phone to start it up again for your next stream and you don't have to change the code your code can be up to 40 characters long and i highly recommend doing that so that no one accidentally enters into your stream uh your actually accidentally enters in and captures your webcam so definitely make one that's like 40 characters long and really hard to guess so the last thing we're going to go over here is settings. Uh, your general is just going to be how essentially how OBS looks and operates for you. It doesn't really impact the stream in any way, shape, or form. Uh, but that being said, you have to go with the dark theme. If you don't go with the dark theme, you're a monster. All right, so stream. It used to be when that you would have to go to Twitch, grab your stream key, copy it, and then paste it into the settings here in OBS in order to stream to Twitch. That is not the case anymore. Now, OBS allows you to log in directly to Twitch from OBS. So you just select Twitch from the service drop down here. You also have options for YouTube, Facebook Live, Restream, Twitter, all that. And then it's gonna come up with a connect account option, not for me because mine's already connected. And then you're just going, it's just going to come up with a pop-up. You log into Twitch. It asks if you want to authorize OBS to do all these things. You hit yes and it is fully connected. Then when you hit the start streaming button, you stream right to Twitch. And that's all you gotta do. Uh, output mode. So the, so this is important if you want to record your VODs on Twitch. You're going to need to enable Twitch VOD track so that the audio goes through. If you don't enable this, your VODs will not have audio. Set it to track one. That means that any audio on track one is going to be sent to the Twitch VODs. Now what that means is if I open up the advanced, oh, hold on. If I open up advanced audio properties, so here you can see that for each audio source, you have different six different tracks that you can send the audio to. The videos can be encoded with multiple audio tracks. Think of them as like audio layers. 
So what I would do is set your odd set your VOD track to be one, and then anything that you want sent to the VOD, you just leave one checked. If you uncheck one, so let's say I uncheck one from the mic, my well I can't do it right now because this is open. But if I uncheck one from the mic, then that means that the mic is no longer going to be sent to the Twitch VOD. That's no longer going to be recorded. So if you don't want to record, say, music that you're playing in the background, then you would just uncheck that from the list for that particular application. And we went over how to do how to capture audio from specific applications earlier. Uh, this is also help. These tracks things are also helpful if you want to record video locally, because if you say, say you're recording a video, right, and you realize afterwards that your mic audio was too low compared to the game audio. If you have the game audio and your mic audio on separate tracks, you can edit them separately, meaning that you can raise up your mic in post to be louder than your game audio. Or you can apply filters to it, like EQ it. So you can set your, say for example, you can set your mic to be track two, and your game audio to be track three so that you can change them later just gonna lurk sounds good glossy thank you for the lurk my man much appreciated so then recording you can just tell it which tracks you want to record so i'm not recording track one because track one is my vod track i am recording tracks two three and four which would be the mic the game and i think desktop audio so I just have those uh, on different tracks, and that's how it is on my regular OBS. These settings apply to all instances of OBS. Also, a uh, thing about a thing about recording format. It says here, recording saved to MP4 MOV will be unrecoverable if the file cannot be finalized. So, for example, in the case of a power outage or OBS crashing, then you're going to lose everything that you've recorded if you don't if if something like that happens. If you want to avoid that, set it to MKV. MKV is not as widely an accepted file type. However, it does that it does save continuously so that you can recover it later. You're going to want to set your recording format accordingly, whether you want it to be more accessible than do MOV, but if you want to account for uh, failures in the program or in your or in your technology in general, then you're going to want to set it to MKV. You can also set your recording paths to the place where the videos are stored right here. I have mine stored in uh, OBS recordings in videos, so it's nice and organized in my system. Uh, you can also set your encoder here and uh, your bitrate and all that stuff, but really, I just leave that default. You could also name your audio tracks if you want to, like I could name track 2 Mike, I could name track 3 Game Audio, but that's do that doesn't really matter in the grand scheme of things. Alright, uh, let's see here. Audio. You just want to set all of this to disabled. Just disable all of it because you want to be able to set it manually in your nested audio scene. So in your nested audio scene is where you want to introduce, you want to have full control over your desktop audio, your individual program audio, your uh, game audio, your mic audio. You want to have control, individual control over all that. So I would not recommend setting any of these up. I would recommend setting your monitoring device specifically to your uh, headphones. So I should probably set this to this. I'm just gonna leave it at the default because it's been working for me. Uh, video will just determine how, uh, what resolution and FPS it will be sent at. I believe 1080p 60 FPS is the default. If you don't have very good in internet, you should probably set it to 1080p 30 FPS. That's also if you don't have a very good GPU. So, uh, so you, it has less of a rendering issue uh, you can get things like hotkeys there's advanced settings but that's essentially all the settings that you want to pay attention to in OBS wait okay last thing did you record fucking bullshit or is that stock that's stock I did not record fucking bullshit why don't you go why don't you go ahead and play it I love that track play fucking bullshit for me oh wait someone play it I want to hear it. I want to hear it now. Yeah! Wow! 
Fucking bullshit. Fucking bullshit. Fucking bullshit. Holy shit, oh fucker. Fucking bullshit. Fucking bullshit. Fucking bullshit. Son of a bitch. What the hell? Woo! I love that song. So good. All right. Stream elements. Let's head on over to our browser. Going to go to stream elements. So when you go to stream elements, this is the first page that you are going to come up with. Over in the top here, you're going to get log in and you're going to log in with your Twitch. It, again, it will ask you to authorize stream elements to control things and you will say yes. Then you're going to be able to go to your dashboard. This is what your dashboard is going to look like when you open it. It's going to tell you all your stats, like how many people have followed you this month, how many people have subscribed. I have zero for most everything because it's the first of the month, so nothing has really happened yet except for Ronald following me. So this is your dashboard. This is going to show you all of your stats and everything. Uh, it's also going to show you your recent uh, events here, like following, your raids, any subs. All right. Uh, so on the left here, you're going to have all of your tools, including your overlays. So your overlays are going to be what you're going to use to get alerts and chat on your stream. Now, in order to do this, you're going to need to install an extension for OBS or a plugin called OBS.Live. Don't worry, this is made exactly, this is made by Stream Elements in cooperation with OBS, so OBS is in on this, in order to uh, link the two. Also, uh, I, get, I probably should have mentioned this before, but uh, Stream Elements is free. Yeah, stream elements, completely free. The catch is, because there is a catch, there's always a catch. The catch is that stream elements is investing in you as a streamer. When you get, when you do things like sell merch or get a sponsorship, they, stream elements gets a cut of that profit as long as you go through them. So you, so they are investing in your future. If you get big, then they get profits off of you. If not, then oh well, you just use their services for free. Honestly, I really like that model because it means that you're not losing out on money starting out and you get access to all of their features from the start. It's really nice, it's a really nice service. But if you don't want to use that and you don't want to use Streamlabs, there are always alternatives. There are alternatives for everything. If you, for example, if you want to get stream alerts, that is, you know, things that pop up and sounds that get made when you get a follower or a subscriber, alerts like that, you can use the stream alerts Twitch extension. Uh, if you want a chat on your displayed on your screen, you can get CapChat, which is actually what I'm using right now. Uh, you, if you want a chat bot to moderate things and offer commands for people, then you can use a uh, night bot, which you probably have heard of. Uh, and if you want other things on your screen, like latest subscriber that you can see up there, or um, yeah, plenty other stuff that interfaces with Twitch, you can implement that yourself using a program called Leorin Board, which we are going to get to if we have time. For now, I'm just going to run you through stream, uh, creating an overlay in Stream Elements real quick. So I'm going to create a new overlay, right? I'm going to set the re resolution to 1080p. I'm going to call this Twitch 101 Overlay. Now, now this is what the overlay editor looks like. You can add a whole bunch of things here, like in OBS, by hitting this plus button. And then you can add alert an alert box which you're probably going to want. Just going to stretch that to cover the whole screen. And we can emulate what it looks like when a follow event happens or when any event happens by clicking the emulate button right here and then clicking follower event. Oh, I have preview live on stream turned on. <laughs> Hey, who wants to see the who wants to see what the subscriber animation looks like? Check it out. This is what the subscriber animation looks like. Yeah, Mike could do Mike diving in. Look at him go. He's screaming. He's mad. Let's go. Let's go. Woo! 
He needs anger management. He kind of do. Also, welcome Lightning Universe to the pit. How you doing? Hell yeah, Micah, indeed. But uh, if I turn preview live on stream off, you can just see here. This is what this is what happens when you hit the when you hit the follower event. This is what shows up. It gets this cool little animation and the phrase Eleonora is now following, and you can change all the settings for these different things by hitting the little cog wheel in the upper left here. So say I want to change the duration of the follower alert. I can go to follower alert, go to alert duration, and set that to say five seconds. Now if I emulate it, one, two, three, four, five. Works well if, you, if you're inserting custom animations, which is what I do now. You can also change the message that's played. So you can say, so say I want to say, name is a true believer. And I hit the follower event. Abby is a true believer. Look at that. You can also change the layout. So if you want it to look like this, or you want it to display over with no text, there you go. You can also change the image or change it to an image or a video. So like what so what I did was I changed it to one of these two animations here. So if I change it to say this one. There you go. Oh, looks like it's not long enough. The animation didn't finish. Let's change it to 7 seconds. Boom, look at that. So there you got your alert box. Now let's say you want a chat. You can just go hit the plus key over, or the plus button over on the bottom left here. Go to engagement. No, wait, no. Uh, let's see here. Doo -doo -doo. Where's chat box? Stream tools, that's it. Your stream's chat right there. Boom, and there we get our chat box. And you can resize it however you please. You can put it in the upright, upper left. You can change it from a dark chat to checker chat, white chat, or custom. Oh, hey, look at that. <laughs> we got a message. Thank you, Luigi girl. Thank you for that. And the message is now gone. And it's gone. You could change how you could change all sorts of settings on these. Uh, it's a very it's a very helpful tool, especially helpful if you're starting out and you don't want to go through a whole bunch of complicated stuff on setting up your chat and all that. It's a very simple tool. You can also insert a couple other things like seasonal stuff, like uh, like a snow effect. Or like a ghost. Pretty cool stuff. I'm gonna change this chat box back to uh, dark chat. All right, so let's say, let's say I like this, right? I'm gonna hit save, and then I'm gonna hit this chain link right here, which is going to cut. Let me copy the hyperlink. Then I'm going to go back to OBS. Going to hit the plus button on the sources and select browser. I'm going to call this overlay. And I'm going to paste the stream elements link that I just copied into the URL. And I'm going to change the width to 1080 and the height to 1920 so it covers the whole screen. You are a little bit late, Loft. But I appreciate you being here. Welcome to the pit. How's it going, my dude? Uh, we already covered audio, but as a quick recap, uh, there's a plugin for OBS that lets you isolate audio coming from certain applications. So I'll just go over that real quick because I know you were particularly interested in this. I have the plugin installed. It's called Wind Capture Audio. It's a plugin for OBS. Very easy to install. Then you hit the plus, once it's installed, you get this application audio output capture source. So you see here, I've already created ones for Discord and Firefox. I can create one for Chrome. Then you just pick the window. Chrome. 
and hit OK. And now Chrome is now Chrome has its own audio source. And that's all there is to it. It works. It works great. Of course, I don't need that. Yeah, dude, it, it's, it's honestly great. I just discovered it recently, but now you may notice that. Oop, hold on. Sorry, this needs to be width 1920 by height 1080. There we go. And now you'll see, we've got our overlay. We've got our snow. We've got our little ghosts running around. We've got our chat. And if I go back to the browser and I hit emulate and click preview live on stream, and then I hit follower events, go back to OBS. Look at that. I dig new, I dig new layout. I'm glad you do, man. I spent a lot of time on it. Thank you very much. I'm glad, I'm glad, I'm glad everyone's liking the new layout. I wasn't entirely sure on it, but I, th I think it came out pretty well. All right, so that's it. So that's it for overlays. And getting all of these other features onto your stream that you that you may have wanted. And uh, yeah, now we need to go over getting your Twitch ready. Is this a part one of the series of Twitch 101 streams? Or is this, a, this is a one-time thing. I am on pace to get through everything uh, tonight, so this will this will be a one-time thing. Unless people want me to do a different stream on like really advanced stuff, like creating your own OBS widgets, which you can do. And I actually have set up right now. It's so, like certain rewards are completely automatic. One of them, degeneracy mode, I'll spoil this now. Does this to my voice along with creating a little bit of a fun overlay. Of course, that's all, that was also a stream deck that I used right there. I can uh, I can create a lot of different voices. Yes, uwu mode. There is an auto uwu award. I can also sound like an old-time radio speaker. What's going on, folks? How you doing? As you can see, it also changed my webcam, so now I look like I'm in film grain 1920s. Yeah, I turn that off. I also have a soundboard. Bioshock intensifies. I've got a lot of new stuff. Thank you. Nope, dude. Thank you. Like I do. I do this because of you guys. I do this because you guys enjoy coming here, and I want to make the stream as enjoyable as possible. So the more I add to it, the more that the more that I'm, you know, trying to give back to you guys. You know, to make this more entertaining. Alright, let's see here. What was I what was I doing? Okay, so we did that. Ah yes, Twitch. We're going to Twitch settings now. So now that we've got everything set up on OBS, we've got to get our Twitch settings set up. Look, it's the stream. Hello everybody, say hi to the stream. Okay, so here you're probably familiar with Twitch panels. You've got your recent broadcast here. This is where your VODs are going to be stored. You're going to have your recent games and all of your uh, your auto host list, which honestly I would recommend editing. You can click these buttons right here to edit your recent games and edit your suggested streamers. We'll get to that. Your about page is where you're going to personalize things for your channel. For now, I have this, which is a which is a minutes leaderboard. I'm using the loyalty point system on stream elements, which we'll get to later, to capture how many minutes everyone's been watching and creating a leaderboard. So currently, it's Luigi Girl Three and someone called Cax Caxips06. Uh, in the lead, it's hide for the lead. I do not know who this is. Uh, Capsips, if you are here, thank you. Uh, you don't need to, you don't need to message anything if you're just lurking, but thank you for watching. Uh, we've also got top clip now. So, Luigi Girl, so many notes are being made, hopefully by next stream everything will be way better. I'm cert, I'm certainly hoping so. I'm betting, I'm betting so, Luigi Girl, your stream is gonna be epic. 
It's a bot, I think. They're in my viewer list sometimes. Or a hella dedicated lurker. Hey, fair enough. Uh, so yeah, Luigi Girl, you may be interested in this. We now have top clip, where I'm going to insert the top clip from the most recent stream. So right now, it is... <laughs> it is uwu for this stream, which was clipped earlier by Fab Money. Nice. I've also got my Discord, the featured songs, my goals, all that stuff. So this is going to be really where you customize your channel. You can hit... Uh, when you get to your about page, there's a, there'll be this little slider here that lets you edit your panels. The panels are in order, and you can insert up to three extensions as panels. So here I have the Stream Elements leaderboards, the Emos Showcase, and the top clip. So that's going- so that- so those are the three extensions I've chosen. You can have three of them. And if you want to see more extensions, you can just hit View All Extensions. So this is going to take you to the extensions page where you can find things like blurb, voice mod bits, crowd control. If you want to see your extensions, you just click over here. So now you can see all the extensions that I have and that I, all the ones I have and all the ones I'm using. Now you can set three of them as panels, two of them as components, which appear like on the side of the stream, and one is overlay, which would be something like stream alerts. So the overlay sits on top of your stream. And if you want to search extensions, say I want to find something for Cheers. We can find th we can find things based on that. Like crowd noise, here you go. Hear your viewers clap and cheer with the simple but this simple button on your stream. That looks nice. Then we can just hit install, configure it, and activate it. Probably as a component. Alright, so that's extensions. You can use, and uh, you can create personalized images. I would I would create images for panels based on that background that we created earlier. Just cut out a part of the background and create a panel with it. That's what I that's what I did. You may notice that's what I did. My background, which is now animated, uh, is the background for these individual uh, elements here. Uh, your ta uh, we'll get to that in a bit. Uh, your schedule. Your schedule is something that you want to set. You want to be consistent with your schedule to be a to be a successful streamer. Successful streamers are consistent. Have a schedule. Stick to it. The more consistent you are, the the more likely you are to get viewers. So you can set your you can hit edit schedule here. Then you can set what you would normally be doing. So, for example, I have Super Paper Mario streams on Monday at 8 p.m. I have art or just chatting streams on 8 p.m. You'll notice I didn't set the category for this one because the category can be different depending on the day. So I just set the name. Same goes for the last one. The category would be different depending on the uh, game. So I just said Random Game Friday. So, yeah, that's going to be that. Uh, your videos, this is where you get your past clips and your VODs. And now we're going to go into the creator dashboard to go over some settings. So your creator dashboard is here, this is where you get all of your stream information and some handy tools. I don't really use it, but you can. Yeah, we got new point rewards, that is right Game Master. Feel free to, feel free to use them. Put a lot of work into them. All right, so so really, you've got a lot to work with on the left here, and you can explore it all on your own time. But the things I want to go over are the settings, so of which uh, we're going to go over stream, channel, and moderation. So let's start with stream. So see here, this is where you would find your stream key. Keep this private. You'll see I'm not showing mine because you don't want other people to use your stream key. That means they can stream to your channel. They can still, while OBS allows you to log in with Twitch, you can still enter your stream key manually. So people can still use your stream key to stream to your channel, and that is something you do not want, so do not let anyone see your stream key. Uh, next up, mature content. This is something you probably want to set if you swear a lot or if you have gore, typically gory content. Uh, unfortunately, channels with mature content enabled tend not to do as well as ones that are not. 
Uh, that's really up to you whether you want to bite your tongue or not, but know that if you curse a lot and you don't have mature content enabled, then you could get in trouble with a parent complaining that their child was watching you and you didn't warn them. So, you know, they could still complain if you have mature content on, but then they don't have ground to stand on because you warned them. Latency mode, I would set to low latency because it gets better real-time interaction with viewers, which is something you want. Ah, here, VOD settings. This is where you, this is where you tell Twitch to store your VODs. This is turned off by automatic. This is turned off by default. You want to turn this on. You want VODs on your channel so that people are aware that you are streaming and can see examples of you when you are not streaming. You also want to enable clips so people can clip your streams. Clips are something people like to do. Uh, you will, I leave always publish VODs on. You can turn it off if you're concerned about things like copyright and music playing. So you can discern whether, okay, maybe I should publish this VOD or maybe I shouldn't publish this VOD. Uh, I just leave it on and just not deal with... Um, copyrighted material. If I am playing copyrighted material, I just go into settings and turn store past broadcasts off beforehand. All right, uh, next up we have, uh, I would not set, well, that's up to you if you wanna set followers only or subscriber only for, uh, in, for making clips. Uh, you want to allow all raids. Raids are the lifeblood of the small streamer community. Allow all them raids. And that's it for stream settings. Moving on to channel. This is where you're going to really personalize your channel. It's where you can set the capitalization in your username. It's where you can set your bio. Uh, first, in your display name, if you have an I, do not capitalize it. That's coming from someone who had a capitalized I for like a week. Uh, it, it looks like an L. It looks like an L. Don't, don't capitalize your I's. Just make them lowercase. I don't care if it looks weird. At least people will pronounce it correctly. Your bio, I would suggest making it short and sweet. Uh, a lot of the most popular streamers you'll notice have very short bios. That is because people have very short attention spans. No one's gonna sit there and read your paragraph long bio. It's very unfortunate, but that's just kind of how it is. I had a really long one and then I changed it to a short one. Uh, you can also set your social links here, such as your Discord, your, uh, your YouTube channel for VODs if you have that, your Twitter. Or your uh, IG, your, I don't know, your TikTok if you have that. You can set all, all your links will appear right here. Your brand, this is where you upload your profile picture, which is going to essentially be your mascot. That is what represents your channel. Uh, you're, go you're going to set your, your uh, channel color, which in mine is a uh, lightish red. And your background, which you should also make out of that background that you made earlier for consistency. You also have a video player banner which shows up when you are offline, but you don't have to make that if you don't want to. I just made mine because I could. Uh, you can also change your schedule from here, but we already showed how you can do that. And featured content, uh, your channel trailer you only get access to when you become affiliate, uh, but you do get your auto hosting. You should auto host channels, again, giving back to the community. Uh, let's see, and then you can set your auto host list here. So currently I have Loft, Eli, Ezra, EB, and Freezy as my recommended streamers because they are regular and I like them and they're cool. You should go check them out. Uh, not right now, but <laughs> but when the stream is over, you should go check them out. Also, uh, also on the days that I don't stream. Uh, your streamer shelf. Your streamer shelf displays other channels who you recommend to your viewers. Display your auto host list. Yeah, I got you, Lofta. I got you. The last thing is moderation. Uh, the major thing that you want... So you can read through all the moderation rules here and do what you want. You can choose to block hyperlinks if you want. Uh, but the major things you want to pay attention to here are chat rules you want to set some chat rules that's the thing that lo little thing that pops up when people try to type in chat for the first time uh you want to pay attention to followers only mode and subscriber only mode so they uh so you know if you want to um you know enable follower only chat or subscriber only chat those are some things that you would set like on and off 
And this one that's new, which is important, is chat verification. So here you can say that so that chatters must have a verified email or a verified phone number or certain settings based on that. So here I have it set that some chatters must have that chatters without a verified email must have accounts older than one week and chatters without a verified phone number must have accounts that are older than one week and first time chatters in my channel must have a verified phone number which is crazy because that means that oh wait no that just means the bot account was older than a week yeah fair enough but yeah the Set that how you want, uh, you know, a balance between accepting, being accepting of people and uh, making sure that malicious accounts don't make it in. But yeah, that's going to be, that's going to be it for your Twitch settings. Uh, there's a lot other, there's a lot more stuff that you can go over. There's your affiliate settings when you get affiliate, but I'm not going over that today. This is more so focused on people who are getting started with streaming. So yeah, that's going to be it for Twitch. Uh, next up, okay. Now we have a discussion section of the video. Engagement on stream, 10 things to keep in mind. So this is gonna be a lot of me talking. Let me know if you have any questions. Let me take a sip of water before I do this. <sighs> My voice is gonna hurt so much after this. All right. 10 things to keep in mind to keep engagement high on your streams. Number one this is pretty obvious. Read the chat. The number one mistake you can make as a streamer, especially a small streamer, is not reading chat. If people are using chat, they're looking to engage with you. If you don't reciprocate, they'll find someone else to support. The situation may be different for speedrunners, but know that the most popular of speedrunners do communicate with chat every now and then, such as Small Ant or CJR. You know, they, they do read chat. So, you know, maybe as a speedrunner, you are just there to put on a show and you're not really interested in engaging with chat. That's fair. But know that reading with chat is the number one way to engage with your viewers. The number two way, always be talking. Much like wanting to go on a date with someone, you can't always expect the other person to make the first move. Get, give the viewer something to comment on by making jokes or commentary about the game, telling a story from your personal life, or just going off on some random tangent. Anything you say could be the start of a conversation, but not if you say nothing at all. If you usually have trouble talking to yourself, try coming up with a list of talking points and stories you'd like to tell before you start the stream. That way, you have something to fall back on if you can't think of anything on the spot. This is especially helpful for just chatting streams where content to spark ideas for talking points is hard to come by. One thing you can also fall back on if you already know you have some chatters is ask open-ended questions, such as, does anyone have any good camping stories, top vacation destinations, worst flavor of ice cream? Even common and dumb questions are great conversation starters. People like to share their experiences and their opinions, just try to keep this dis discussion civil. Remember that we, that even really huge streamers glance at chat to see what the majority of people are 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 reeling about what's hap are eeling about what's happening or feeling about what's happening. True. Yes. Big stream. Reading chat is different as a big streamer because you kind of have to skim the content. But as a small streamer, you definitely have the opportunity to read everyone's messages individually, which is what I do. And I've I've received comments on my engagement before uh, for, you know, reading every chat message. You know, it's something that is to be expected of small streamers. So I would highly recommend reading chat and don't have another tab open or something that isn't chat. Yeah, if, it's, if something is going to distract you from chat and what and the streaming content, don't have it open. If you can ha if you can handle it, it's fine. But if it's going to distract you, don't have it open. That's some of the best advice I've ever heard. <laughs> Glad you think so. All right, number three, do not watch your viewer count. A lot. I I know some people who make this mistake. You know, ever since I've started, I've only ever one. Uh, sorry, I've never once intentionally checks my viewer count during a stream. That's because you shouldn't one feel the pressure of streaming to nobody, two 
call out viewers who aren't chatting. That's a dick move. Don't do that. And three, treat one viewer differently than you would treat 10. If you have one viewer or if you have 10 viewers, you should be streaming the exact same. Reading chat and doing your thing and talking. So do, so do not monitor that view count. Do not feel like because it's zero, you don't need to say anything. Don't wait for someone to get into chat. Just do your thing, keep talking, and the people will come. Number four, play with the community. On stream or off stream, set up events where you can play with viewers and followers. Plenty of people are only on Twitch for background noise, but plenty more are here to join in the fun. Give them an opportunity to engage with you directly. If you have a Discord, you can also open up a call lobby. Definitely an incentive to join the server. Currently hot games include Gartic Phone, Smash Ultimate, and yes, Among Us. So, you, you know, setting up community nights is a good is a good thing. You know, viewers like to play with the streamers. A lot of them do. So giving them an opportunity to do so is a good thing. Such as Loft Smash, Ult Smash Ultimate streams. He has open lobbies. Next up, we have Chatbot, number five. Here we're going to go back to stream elements real quick. That gives you an idea. What is your idea, Game Master? Have you ever tried the dolphin emulator before? I have. I have tried it. Yes, community community nights. Definitely a, definitely a plus. What is this about the dolphin emulator? Also, while you type that up, I am going to go over chatbot. So using a chatbot can dual function as an aut as automatic moderation for your stream chat as well as offer some exciting, unique commands for your audience. So stream elements comes with a chatbot, which we can check the commands here, create some custom commands. Like I have commands for the Discord, for when I do certain games, for when I multi-stream. So the chatbot, you can set up to have cool, cool commands such as emotes to show what emotes uh, exist on the channel, follow age to see, follow age to see how long, the, so the viewer can see how long they've been following, giveaways, give, um, there's a uh, point betting systems, there's song requests, so many, so many different things you can do. There's a quote, there's quote systems which I wanted to implement for today, but. Yeah, having a chatbot can really help liven up chat. It has a feature called Netplay, which allows you to play GameCube and Wii games with other people. We could play Mario Party or some older Smash games with some, some time. Ooh, that would be fun. I would be interested in doing that, Game Master. You know, maybe I, maybe I should consider that for Friday. Hmm, maybe. That's definitely, that's definitely something we could do. All right, but that yeah, that's your chatbot right there. Definitely consider doing that. All right, next up we have loyalty points. So stream elements also comes with a loyalty points features. Loyalty points are like channel points on Twitch, except they're ser they're provided by a service. The only services I know that provide loyalty points are Streamlabs and Stream Elements. So if you go to stream elements, you'll see loyalty down here, click it and you can set up your settings. You can name what the, you can give the name of it. For now, I am using Twitch rewards for DBs for all that stuff. But if you are a non-affiliate streamer, you can use the loyalty points as, as channel points. You can have your own system. You can set how many people get per minute, per 10 minutes. You can set subscriber multipliers, different event bonuses, uh, all that's all that stuff. So yeah, this is honestly a great option for those who are not affiliates. And I wish I had really known about it sooner. I would have been taking advantage of it. This is really cool for people who just do not have access to channel points. I'm getting a subtle feeling that he doesn't like Streamlabs. Uh, whatever gave you that idea, Zoo? Whatever gave you that idea? Hmm, that's weird. It's weird. You're weird. You're, you're reading a little too much into it. 
So the disadvantages of this uh, loyalty system, you won't be able to take advantage of Twitch's built-in reward system, which means no custom image previews for your rewards, you'll be using chat messages instead, no options for automatic Twitch integration using Leoran board, we'll get into that later. Uh, and at the simplest le level, this means no things like highlight my message or unlock an emote. Still, wonderful option, wish I'd known about it, absolutely cool. All right, next up we have giveaways. Now, many guides will say that giveaways are a great way to engage the audience. However, I don't recommend this for small streamers starting out. Try to build your community up at least a little before, go, a little first, before you go raffling off free shit. Otherwise, you might run the risk of one-time moochers coming in and just running off with the prize. In general, giveaways are helpful for maintaining and engaging an existing community, but not very good for nurturing a brand new one. So giveaways, use it later. Use it when you already have a community. Do not use it as a way to get a community. You don't want people that are just coming in for free shit. Visit other streams. This is the big one. This is what I did to grow. No kidding, this is le legitimately what I did to grow at the beginning. Go to other streams for games like the ones you play. Engage with their community. Solidify yourself as a friendly visitor before casually mentioning your own stream goals, such as, you know, for example, I don't know, completing the 803 Jumpless Moon Challenge in Mario Odyssey. You know, for, as, an, as, as a random example. Don't self-promote right out of the gate, though. If you just go into someone's stream and you just start saying like, Hey, I'm streaming this. You should come watch. That's a dick move. That is a dick move. I wouldn't recommend doing that on an ethical level. However, if you are, you know, engaging with their community and just, you know, being a good chatter and it just so happens to come up that you are doing a challenge yourself or you're playing a game yourself or, Hey, I'm getting started streaming. Do you have any tips? Like then it's, that's fine. You know? Yes, it's Mushrise Park music on the, in the background. I'm surprised you can hear that that well. I did that even before I started streaming. Exactly, Luigi Girl. Just engaging with the communities is the number one way to grow from zero. That reminds me of a good rule of thumb for talking in a chat. Don't tell the streamer you're leaving their stream to watch someone else. Yes, do not tell them that. Just tell them, just tell them you are leaving. Just tell them you have to leave. You don't have to say why. Just say that you're leaving. Don't say that you're going to watch someone else. That's a bit of a kick in the dick. All right, that takes care of that. I, I really stress that one, honestly. I, I highly stress that one. It's, it's really helpful at any level. Rating number nine. Rating is an amazing method for introducing yourself to other streamer communities. That remember, this is the bread and butter of the small streamer community. Think about it. From the very moment you arrive, you are already in a favorable position in the eyes of the chat and the streamer. They already think you're a good person for rating. It's like it's like number eight, just going and engaging with the community, but you have a good in. Entering a stream as a normal viewer is fine, but entering as a raider is much better. Of course, this only really works if you have a minimum of two viewers, which uh, which brings us to our last tip and trick. View yourself. So this one is a bit of a cheat. However, think of it this way. If you want to dance in public, are you more likely to dance alone just like, you know, go into the middle of a town square and start dancing? Or are you more likely to join an already dancing crowd? Question, how, do ha how to handle people bringing up view count? Uh, ask them kindly not to. Uh, I mean, like every now and then someone will mention in my chat, like, holy shit, man, you're like, you're like, you're really raking in the views. And, I'm, and I'll be like, oh, really? That's cool. But uh, I don't, I don't make a huge deal out of it. You know that the idea is just play it off. Ask them not to remind you of the view counts. Don't watch it. 
Stream Elements has a cool thing where afterward, after the stream, they will send you an email that shows you your viewers over time. So you can track like when you lost people, when you gained people, and that's helpful for determining what in your stream was entertaining and what wasn't. But in the in real time, again, treat one viewer like you treat 10 viewers. Stream as you would to anyone. Yes, and viewers are a big mental thing. So yeah, uh, th this is a, this last one is a bit of a cheat. However, it does help. You can count as a viewer to your own to your own stream. So if you have your own stream open in a browser tab, you have one viewer automatically. If you it, like in the dancing analogy. If someone is already wa if someone's coming along and they perceive that someone is already watching you, they're more likely to come in and start watching you and start chatting. It's th they're more likely. It's also it also gives a slight boost to your numbers uh, if you're trying to get affiliate by getting the average three uh, three viewers over the past thirty days. Next up, we have our our second to last topic. Starting and running a discord so These are going to be my tips for discord. These are not going to be as experienced because I'm not as experienced with discord But this is going to be my tips for running a discord So firstly infinite nice When is the right time to start my discord? You, I'll say that you'll know what the time is right when it happens. For me, it was when people were eager to share content with me during stream and had no way to do it using Twitch chat. So we originally created the Discord simply as a tool for sharing our interests and it just kind of grew from there. That being said, people like to share what they're interested in, give them outlets to do so in the form of specialized channels. You'll see here we have things like the merch table, the food stand, intermission, and the, the jam cham and the jam chamber for art, food, uh, wholesome memes and or wholesome content, and music. And no and notice everything on my Discord is themed. It's still sticking to the theme of metal. Of metal music keep your discord on brand it it keeps it more personalized see I wouldn't re so yeah make make ch make outlets for them to you know express their interests but I wouldn't recommend just making 20 new channels for interests you can only assume people will want to share like you know make a channel for sports make a channel for art make a channel for food make a channel for i don't know tv repair who cares for or for cars don't just make channels assuming people are going to talk in them also for me personally i recommend not having too many channels yeah i would recommend that as well having too many channels can seem overbearing let the community talk and introduce new channels as necessary. The server feels more personal and comfortable that way. What should I include on it? Give people channels for their interests, but aside from that, some of the basics you'll need will include a primary channel for general discussion, so general, a public voice call channel that can be used for community streams and events, and a channel through which you can make your announcements, such as going live on Twitch, or making changes to the Discord, or planning community events. You know, those things. You want a place to keep those so they're, so you know they stay nice and organized and don't get buried in general. Aside from that, you can include whatever channels you want. I'm in a server with 19 channels dedicated to memes alone. <laughs> and do you... <laughs> Do you like that? Is that a plus to you, Game Master? I'm asking genuinely. I, I, I don't know whether that's a good thing or a bad thing, but uh, I, would, I personally wouldn't do that. Uh, should I use a template? There are Discord templates out there. I didn't, and I do not regret it. Again, I let my channel grow naturally with the community. When the need comes for a new channel or new roles or a new bot, I introduce them. The server this way is catered specifically to you and your viewer base, and they can, and the viewer base can feel the growth with you. You know, they'll notice changes. All right, next up, encouraging engagement, getting people talking on your Discord. This is a big one. Number one, be active in responding to the members of your community. 
Encourage them to contribute their talents, passions, and interests. Do they play an instrument? Ask them to share a recorded cover or original piece. Do they like creative writing? See if they have any stories or excerpts they'd be willing to share. Do they draw? Well, you, you know, you get the point. If they, if they have, if you feel like they have something to contribute, ask them to do so. Encourage them to contribute and reward them. Number two, create topics of conversation. Ask an open-ended question. Does anyone have any good camping stories, top vacation destinations, worst flavor of ice cream? Even common dumb questions are great conversation starters. People like to share their experiences and their... Wait. I can send some of the stuff I've made. Yo, please do. Also, I just realized I wrote the same thing twice. <laughs> you wanna know why? Cause it, cause the same rules for engaging your Twitch chat apply to engaging your Discord. They, they really go hand in hand. There are slight differences between the two. There are there are things you can get away with on Discord that you can't get away with on on Twitch. But generally, it's the same concept. Encourage people. Speaking of, speaking of things that you can do on Discord that you can't do on Twitch, set up community events. One advantage of Discord over Twitch is you aren't limited to non-copyrighted material. While you won't get any new community members doing events on Discord, you will garner more engagement from your current community. Start movie nights, listen to music together, organize contests. There's plenty of stuff you can get away with on Discord that you cannot get away with on Twitch. Take advantage of that. Next, be open and respond to DMs. Do not be that distant idol. You are not that famous. Most people often watch small streamers because they are easy to engage with. The purpose is defeated if you don't engage. At the earlier stages, you and your community are a tightly knit unit. Your relationship is more akin to friendship than simply streamer and follower. Respond to DMs, address their concerns, help them out, be a good friend. And finally, last one, be positive. Your community reflects your attitude. If you consistently come off as negative, the types of people who will join your community will likely bring toxicity. On top of that, no one you want sticking around will if they don't feel good vibes. This goes hand in hand with encouragement. You should be getting people to share participate, to share and participate and rewarding them for doing so. That's the key. Be active, be nice. No one's going to be active on your server if you aren't if you aren't active on your server. And no one's going to want to share things if you're not nice about it. Isn't the whole point being popular of being popular engaging with people? I'll never understand all the famous streamers that never talk to anyone. They're going for like the idol status, you know? Like the really famous people, uh, which comes from the idea of, you know, an unachievable glory, something you can't touch because once you touch it, it becomes real and it's no longer a dream. So they want to stay as a sort of they want to stay as a sort of fantasy in the eyes of their viewer base. They want to achieve that godlike status. It doesn't work when you're tiny. And honestly, I don't I'm not a fan of it in general for large streamers either. All right, moderation, the last thing I'm going to mention for Discord. At some point, you may have to moderate your community to keep things generally positive among its members. Remember, every tree grows a few bad apples. Assign mod roles on Twitch and on Discord according to your discretion. Think of who you trust most with that power. It, re it really, really matters. You can also set up, you can also set up bots on Discord. So for this is something that I don't have written down in the curriculum, but I have I'll go over what bots I have on this server. I currently have four bots: birthday bot, birthday bot, easy poll, ping cord, and yag PDB. So what they do, birthday bot is really simple. You set up your birthday with birthday bot, and it alerts everyone when it's your birthday. Pretty easy. It's the most recent one I installed. Easy poll. Easy poll is a bot that I use to create polls on Discord. The way that a poll works on Discord, and I'll go to Crowd Choice for that, is you enter all the information and then it creates a miniature 
thread, I think is what this is. I don't know what it is, but it, it has the question and it has all the choices and then it creates a reaction for each of the choices and then people just choose react to the ones that they like. So yeah, so yeah, that's what uh, Easy Poll does. Ping cord is a simple bot that pings people when they when you go live. You can set it up to ping everyone, or you can set it up to ping a certain role, which is what I do. And to get people to join that role uh, of pinging, I have the gone lot. Or sorry, the gone live is where it pings to. That, that's where the ping messages point to, or post to. I have the front gate. This is the channel that people come into initially. And to set this up, I have yagpdb.xyz. And essentially what this is, is it sets up this message right here, where if you click on a certain reaction, it performs a certain action in Discord. In this case, clicking the devil horns, makes you an attendee, which gives you access to the rest of the server. When you get the invite to the Discord, this is where you go first. That you go to this specific page and you cannot access any others until you click those devil horns and accept the rules. You can also click on this bell icon to be notified of future streams. And that, so that's how I get people to join the ping, uh, the ping me role. So yeah, that's what I currently have implemented. Oh yeah, and there's Fredboat. Fredboat plays music. So yeah, we can use Fredboat to play music in the voice channel. Uh, but you know, those bots are always going down, so I wouldn't rec so, you know, uh, stick with it or not. But yeah, there are other fa there are other famous bots such as Dinobot that I'm not using. I'll I might eventually use them, but that's what I currently have set up. And it's relatively, it was relatively simple to set up too, so it's not that hard. I could go over other things like setting up roles and all that, but really you'd, ju you'd be more, um, you'd be better off just finding a tutorial on YouTube for how to set up your Discord for, um, you know, different roles and channels and things and how permissions work. Uh, knowing how permissions work is a very important part of running a Discord. I would highly recommend looking into that. Uh, let's see here. That's it for all the major stuff. If people are interested, I have one more section in the curriculum, which is called Advanced Topics in Streaming. This will cover uh, things like the VLC Media Source and OBS, the OBS Move Transition plugin, Stream effects and stream shaders plugins, the Raya plugins, the and Leorin board, which you, is what I use. You do shit like this. And shit like this. And shit like this. And how I get all those custom rewards to work. So yeah, that's what, so I use the Orin board for that. It looks like, the stream deck looks like this. So this is what I have it set up to look like. Here are all my sounds, here are all my voices. Hold on, I just want to try this one. Ah! How's that? <laughs> Do I sound like I'm trapped in a well? Help! Help me! No one can help you now. I just, I, I, I'm gonna have a lot of fun with these. I'm gonna have a lot of fun with these in the future. Yeah, that's what the, that's what the deck looks like when you, when you finally implement it. And then we have the Leoran board receiver here, which is what runs everything. So the voice changer board is this one right here, but I also have an auto trigger board that, do that does all this stuff. So, the so this first one does the text to speech uh, reward. It's called Leoran board. I'll type that in chat. 
There are definitely tutorials that you can look up on how to use how to use and set up Leoran board to do all sorts of cool stuff. Uh, in fact, I'll give you so I'll give you guys some resources right now that you can use to look to look up further stuff. So let's go to YouTube. The first one that I would recommend is Stream Scheme. This is the first guy that I watched when I when uh, before I even got started streaming. He gave me the tips like uh, going to view going to view other streams when you're starting out to get people to come to yours. You know he's he's a really smart guy, and he definitely has some. Uh, he definitely has some clickbaity content, but he has some content worth listening to, too. Uh, another one that you can look at when you're getting started is Alpha Gaming. He will help you with your setup and all that kind of stuff. Like lighting and all that stuff. Also a cool guy. Uh, and for get for doing cool stuff on OBS, like really mastering OBS, check out Andy Lippy. See here, the first thing that comes up, voice activated characters in OBS. And the most handy OBS plugin for creators. So they so yeah, he is very good a very good resource to go to if you want to uh if you want to learn more about working in OBS and making some advanced stuff. Of course, I don't recommend going hard agree with these. Nice, nice. So yeah, uh, that's... Well, I guess I'll go over these things real quick. Oh, I love this song. This is nice. Okay, real quick. Uh, the VLC media source in OBS. The VLC media source is superior, like a superior media source. And it gets installed automatically when you install VLC 64-bit version on your computer. Which, uh, VLC is just a very handy video player. I actually use it for viewing my videos on my computer. But the VLC video source is like a media source, except you can also create playlists that shuffle. So, for example, the way my the way my dance redemption works is the trigger, which I can show you in Leoran board, gets sent to dance. So you can see here I've got a, tr a trigger for the dance redemption, which then activates these commands, which tur which reshuffles a VL the playlist on a VLC media source that you can't see, and then turns it on for exactly 30 seconds, which all the clips are 30 seconds, and just plays a random song for me to dance to. So yeah, combination of the VLC media source and the and Leoran board allows me to do that. So very handy. Next up we have the OBS move transition. So if I Go to the fit. Let's say I'll do this on live split. So I'll go to live split. I'll go to filters and then I will add the move. I think the uh, move source. Oh, wait, no, I have to put this. OK, so I go to the scene and I go to filters. Yes, you can put filters on scenes, which is what I do with my webcam because I'm using shaders on it, but I'm going to create a move source. I'm going to pick live split and it's going to last we'll say one second. We're going to get the transform. I'm going to scooch it over here. Get the transform. Scooch it back over here. Visibility. See, so start trigger. This filter is displayed. These when this filter is. So let's do that.
And now, when I th when I press this button, boom! Look at that. So if I move it anywhere and I activate the move source filter, it moves it back to that position. Over a set, over a set period that I can say. So that's the, that's the move transition. And use that in combination with Leoran board and you can make some really cool animations. All right, so that's that's the move transition plugin. Uh, next up, we have the Raya plugins. So if you go to your browser and you go to here, Reaper, or you just search up Raya plugs, R-E-A plugs, then you can download these plugins, which are audio plugins that you can apply to your voice. So for example, say, Oh shit, Ezra, what? <laughs> what is going on, my man? Yo, Ezra with the raid, thank you so much, my dude. What is going on, Luyuki, Lichi? Multitasking, love it. The music, yeah, we've had that going on the entire time. How's 101 going? Good. We're actually just wrapping up now. I'm going over the I'm going over the final advanced topics for the stream. But yep, we are just about wrapping up. I was just showing how uh, uh I can change my voice using these Raya plugins here. I can make it high pitched. I can make it demonic. I can sound like I'm in the bottom of a well. And I can sound like I'm an old time radio. How's it going, folks? So yeah, that uh, a lot of fun stuff that you can do with uh, Guy Fox. We have her family. Transfer one million in unmarked bill. Bring one million unmarked bills to a dis an undisclosed location, and we will return them safely. Yo, what is up, Fee? Welcome to the pit. How's it going? Yo, Fee, thank you for the follow. I'm still Guy Fox, aren't I? Am I no longer Guy Fox? I really need to make a change on this so I can tell. Hold on, I can I can check. No, I can't check. Oh well. Sounds just like Jigsaw. I would like to play a game. Hey, hold on. I would like to play a game. Yeah, I hope you had a good stream, man. You were playing Wind Waker? How far how far are you in Wind Waker? How you doing? How you doing in that game? So yeah, these plugins, completely free. You can slap them on your on your mic to make you sound really cool. The mitosis voice? Oh, the mitosis. Okay, well, mitosis is rather simple. Right now, there is one of me. And now there are many. I am now many. I am the multi-hardcore. <sighs> and now I'm a robot. Death to all humans. <laughs> bring us your, bring us your fleshy meat bags. And of course, we just got a little bit of soft reverb here. I certainly hope I don't have any of these things still on. I thought I haven't set a thing to where it shows where it's act if it's activated yet. So I need to. Uh, I need to do that, because right now I can't tell if my voice is weird, or if I've managed to turn them all off properly. How does it sound? Do I sound like me, or do I sound like something else? Oh, Ezra just uh, uh, I'm good? Okay, cool. I just upgraded the mat. You, ju you just upgraded the Master Sword fully? Yo, Evil's Bane! Ganon better watch out tonight! <laughs> Nice, nice, my man. Oh man, we are getting real dang close to that follower goal. I think we only have, what, like, 
four more. Four more followers. That gauge is almost full. Four more followers, three more subs. We looking good right now. Which actually, you know what? You know what? <laughs> Let's go! How does one make sound alerts? Okay, so are you talking about the uh, sound alerts that uh, bits can- Yes, I got through it all. Uh, are you talking about the ones that uh, people can do for bits, which are currently all free? All my, all my bits ones are free right now. Ezra, I got that idea from you. Shout out to you, my dude. My dude. Or are you talking about the ones uh, where, the, where an emote creates a sound. Ah, those. Uh, that would be the sound alerts extension on Twitch. So if I go to Twitch here, and I go to my extensions, and I go to sound, this is sound alerts. I have that set as component one, and I can configure it using the sound alerts dashboard. And I can upload, I can find some in the library or upload my own sounds, which I did. <laughs> oh, we both did it, nice. Yeah, they're yeah, they're connected to sounds. So yeah, this was so yeah, I have all these uploaded. I have one uploaded specifically for Jorbin, but he didn't uh, he didn't see it. But you know, maybe one day he'll find it. Maybe one day. But yeah, that's uh, that's how I do that. That's how I do those. Is with this extension. Could you tell me how you connect sounds to emos? Because I've never seen that before. Ah, that is using. Funny enough, that is using a Streamlabs thing. I do use one thing by Streamlabs, and that is their Streamlabs chatbot. Specifically because you, what you can do is you can create a command that is the exact name of the emote. So whenever it detects that emote in chat, it will play a sound. So that's how I did that. You can also set this up in Leoran board to do the same thing. So if I open uh, Leoran board, right here and let's say that I create a new button and I set the twitch trigger to be or not a twitch trigger actually yes yeah, a twitch trigger and I set that to be a chat message and the chat message is uh, make it 24 mic uh, hype Now that will trigger it. The only the only issue is uh, that it has to be exactly that. If you're using Leoran board, uh, it has to be exactly that emote. Like you can't post any more emotes. So if someone spams emotes, it doesn't work. It has to be exactly that one. Which is why I prefer the Streamlabs one. So Streamlabs, shady. I know. But it does give me this cool feature, so and it's for, and it's free. So I'm taking advantage of a free service that they offer. So, to me, great content by the way. This gives me an idea for contents. I am so glad to hear that, Freezy. I can't wait to see what you do. I am still looking, Freezy. I am still looking into how to get the auto shout out uh, with a raid trigger. I think it's possible. I think the way, you know, if I'm just gonna, if I'm just gonna freestyle on the beat, if I want to make a, uh, thing called auto shout out. So when someone raids me, it just says in chat, like, go follow this person. I can create a button. I can set the Twitch trigger to raid. Set done. Then I can go to commands. Add a command. Create a Twitch chat message. That says, hey. 
Go follow this person. Actually, I can make it, I can make it, uh, let's see, if I do slash, dollar sign, raider, dollar sign, slash, then the cha channel name is make it hardcore, and then what I'm going to need is to get that username, so I'm going to need to trigger pull, variable is raider, Pull value, raid trigger, username, turn to real false, and there you go! Done! I now have a trigger so that if someone raids me, it's going to say, hey, go follow this person in chat. I'm sad I gotta wait for stage crew cooldown. Not only that, Ezra, you gotta fight people for it. You've got- I know at least three other people who are looking to get that, uh, on Monday. So, early on Monday stream is when stage crew becomes available again, and it's going to... You're going to have to fight off some people. Who knows, I might just have- I might just have to, like, open up stage crew for people, uh, for Christmas or something. <laughs> who knows? Is it like a week of cooldown? Yes, it is, so I have time to draw it. Up, oh, take that, make that five people. Make that five people who want to get it. Yeah, VIP stage crew though. Ooh, you get a full reference. Yeah, instead of getting a little head, you get a full body reference. Oh, <laughs> Louis Key is devious too. What time do I stream? 8 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. So I think for you, if you're Pacific Time, that is 5 p.m. If you're Mountain Time, that is 6 p.m. If you're Central Time, that is 7 p.m. It really doesn't affect me though. Oh, oh really? Yes, a full body reference, Luigi Girl. You get a full body extension. Yeah, I figured you would. I figured you would, and I know that you're already well on your way there. You get VIP status and you get that. It's it's actually a pretty sweet deal if you ask me. All right, I think that's going to be it unless anyone has unless anyone has any other questions. Of course, you can always message me on Discord. Uh my Discord is right here. If anyone would like to join, we have fun. We're going to be doing community events soon. Maybe some movie nights. Uh, I'm planning on doing a contest soon, so that's going to be fun. But yeah, uh, you can always message me on Discord if you have any questions. Like, if you want if you want some help setting something up, just let me know. I'm always down. Assuming I have the time. You know, you might already be a really good streamer out there. You might be like a, a Freezy or an Ezra or a Loft. But even then, I hope you can find something in here that you didn't know or that you or that inspired you to come up with a new idea. And I hope that you can share that with your with your own community. If anyone else wants to do a Twitch 101 to cover their like what they think is important for streaming, uh, I would love to see that. I, honestly, I would like to see if this became a thing. That'd be really cool. But in any case, I think that's going to be it for today. Uh, let's see. Let's go ahead and raid EB. Y'all are the y'all are the freaking best. Thank you so much for coming. Really appreciate it. Go give EB a big warm welcome for me. Glad I could pop in. Have a good night, everyone. Yes, have a good night, everyone. <laughs>